What's the fucking story, everybody? How are you keeping, guys? Oh, yeah. I love those intros, guys. I absolutely love them. They just get me all riled up. I absolutely love it. Uh, hope you are all keeping well. Hope you are having a lovely... Uh, looks like it's wet out there now. It's fucking raining or, or windy or some shite's going on out there. So, I don't know. I've closed myself off from the outside world here. So, um, And I'm really looking forward to this show, guys. Because uh, we're really coming close to our one year anniversary. Um, it's gonna be on the 8th of April. It's been one year doing this, doing Demars Live. It was called Demars Radio before. Now it's Demars Live. It's evolved into something else. And um, yeah, it's just been an absolute pleasure doing it. So I'm really excited today. Uh, we've got a great show. We've got Alex J. Byrne from Le Chats. We've got the full band, kind. We've got the, all, they're all in. They're all coming in. So we're gonna try and fit them in on our couch. We've got, Max Factor, we've got Downey's Gaming Corners back. Like, it's great, I'm so excited. And we've got four tunes to play as well. We've got Sam O'Reilly in the house. We've got Sheila Gila Giles. How's it going, Sheila? We're playing your track today. We got Maximilian Foy in the house. And then uh, we've got a couple of people in the background. Guys, these are all very, very welcome. I am simulcasting on uh, YouTube and Twitch. Uh, I'm going to primarily have my uh, YouTube open unless the Twitch gets a little bit more active. So, Sam, if that's your last name there, Sam O'Reilly, stay in YouTube. Um, uh, unless, well, you've got the Twitch channel points. Keep that open so you can build up your channel points. But we're live on Twitch too, guys. So, if you want to, uh, if you like Twitch or prefer Twitch, um, you are more than welcome to use it. I'll slap it up there in the comments section, okay? Um, it's handy because you can develop channel points and stuff and, and use them for certain things. Now, I'm not going to be doing... There's a karaoke one, right? I shouldn't be saying these now, but um, I won't be able to avail of the karaoke one. I forgot to take that down. So, uh, Sam, don't you get any ideas because you, you sprung that on me last time. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, we got Brew in the house. What's the story? Brew! Good to see you, man. And we've got Viking Promotions as well with a hello, everybody. And, of course, with the moderator badge. So, Rebecca, you keep an eye out on that chat for me, all right? Uh, you know who to look out for. Uh, Dave Duggan especially, now I'm only messing, uh, or am I? Uh, but we've got a great show guys, I'm really excited uh, to introduce our first little bit of music. Um, we've got four fantastic acts, I'm going to try and fit everybody in the first 30 minutes, but we have to have Alex in at 6.30, so um, you know, <laughs> Tommy Cullen, karaoke, oh stop man, okay, maybe later during the gaming, actually no, 100% later during the gaming, by the way, I hope he's like my new camera. I hope... I don't know if he's noticed any difference. It's hard for me to see it um, on a small... sort of Because the screen's a little bit small for me here. But new camera over here, guys. I hope... I've got more space. See? I can do my dance moves. There we go. See? Woo! 
a uh, lot more wider angle there, so we have a lot more space to work with. So look, without further ado, let's get cracking. Let's listen to some music, yeah? Are you ready for some tunes, guys? Because I fucking am. Right, let's do it. Russell Hogg, our first bit of tunes today, uh, released Shadows just recently. And uh, Russell is an absolute legend, close friend of mine. And um, I think he's just an amazing musician. I I'm sure some of you uh, had the pleasure and privilege of seeing him live on stage. Um, I saw him uh, in Shit a at the crystal skull sessions um and he held a note for about two minutes it was unbelievable he was just crazy uh so uh, he's unbelievable unbelievable singer so a uh, big shout out to russell hogg for just releasing his track there i i don't know if it's your debut release russell i, I apologize for for not knowing that information but I, I feel like it might be your first on uh spotify uh but an absolute legend singer songwriter from tala um, he's been part of the Dublin scene for over a decade. Uh, he's been running his weekly um, shows, if you might know, uh, the open mic event in Shin A. Uh, for, it was called That's It Recording, where you actually get a recording as well of your... Uh, music which was just brilliant you know it's just amazing he did stuff like that um, and he's done loads of stuff across loads of different venues uh, he's performed at electric picnic knock and stockin at the and the secret village music festival um and loads of other places across the city so um Whelan's, Shine, obviously sweeney's when it was open the workman's and fibbers and um, also did sound engineering in so many different places so uh first track today shadows by Russell Hogg, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. He's going to enjoy it because uh, he's an amazing musician. So there you go. Let me just uh, slap this up here. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. Enjoy. And just let me know, guys, if the sound is okay for you. Uh, let me know in the chat. Trying to trying to balance everything out.
All right, so that was Shadows by the awesome Russell Hogg. Big shout out to him there. And um, Maximilian Foy did a fantastic uh, review um, of that track there and posted it into the comments section. If you want to open that up, save it for later, bookmark it for later if you want, guys. Uh, we try to cover as many artists as we can uh, through that magazine as well, of course. So it's very difficult to get everybody. And um, so that's what this show as well is for sometimes, you know, is to have... Uh, play musicians but we, we we got Russell twice which is always nice when we can get an artist twice uh, on the show and on the magazine so um, do check it out Maximilian Foy as well is in the chat there as well um, so uh, you can let us know as well what you think of his uh, review so our next artist guys is Tommy Cullen and his most recent release as well I believe it was just I think we just have these releases since yesterday which is great it's nice to get nice and fresh uh, releases that's why I like having this show on a Saturday um, but Tommy Cullen released his recent track Night, M- Night Moon and uh, I think most of you guys should know Tommy Cullen by now because we've reviewed him um, I think twice now already and um, we've had him on the show and uh, we've played his music as well before a lot so he's uh, he's very close to us in Demar's uh, magazine and Demar's live and uh, Demar's entertainment as a whole he's always tuning in so it's great uh, great to be supporting him uh, he's a song- singer-songwriter from Dublin if you don't know him um, his latest um, releases in a series of home recorded singles so Night Moves, um, that was written last year during Ireland's first lockdown. Uh, the song has a delicate and plaintive tone, revealing a yearning for contact um, in a time of universal hurt. Uh, so it was mixed by Marcus J and mastered by Ivan Jackman, uh, while the single's artwork features photography by Joanna uh, O'Malley. Um, I really suggest you uh, you check out, um, and all of these artists you should definitely check out on Spotify, of course. Um, now, I've posted in the links to each artist uh, in the description there, guys. So, geez, I have to bend over kind of like this to chat to you. Uh, <laughs> I, need to get, I need to move this. This mic over there but I, I i don't have the thing yet so but anyway what i'm trying to say is uh in the description all of the artists are there all the info about what's going on tonight as well is there guys so do have a look at the description and uh and hop in there and support some of these artists uh further of course and uh, do slap a like on the video by the way that does support the artists too it bumps up this video and people get to see it uh, more on youtube and uh, of course if you are interested in subscribing and uh joining back with us again uh, that would be awesome so without further ado we've got night Moves by Tommy Cullen.
Night Moves by Tommy Cullen. And there he is in the chat as well. Tommy, welcome uh, to Demar's Live. Welcome to uh, the chat. Thanks for popping on. Uh, absolutely awesome chat, uh, brother. Uh, fair play to you. And best of luck uh, with uh, releasing it out to the world. I hope everything goes well for you. And so, yeah, guys, do check out Tommy Cullen. His description or his uh, YouTube or Facebook even is in the description. Uh, really invite you all to, in, to, to follow all of these uh, wonderful artists that I'm playing here today. And there's the guys with the support for you as well. Uh, Viking Promotions uh, absolutely digging the track and Maximilian Foy as well saying great song uh, we've got Mick Joyce and the Sonic Gypsies as well Mick how are you doing man good to see you saying nice and moody tune by Russell Hogg yeah Ria, really really cool tune uh, by Russell I have to say um, so yeah no that's absolutely awesome uh, guys so we're going to move on uh, swiftly to our next track and uh, because Sheila is in the house um, and we've got 13 minutes left before we bring on our first guest. I'm going to play this song just in case we don't have time for our fourth one and we have to play it later on at seven in the in between. Um, so uh, we're going to play Sheila's song. So Sheila Gila. Now, I didn't know that's how you call yourself, Sheila. I think it's awesome. Um, and uh, uh, she did a song with Curtis uh, Gay. Lou Gay. Is that am I pronouncing that right? Or is that is that made? That sounds like a made up name. Uh, <laughs> So the song is called The Crime and um, about Sheila. She was born in London, uh, came to Ireland in 98 and um, she continues to add uh, music and artwork continuously to her website. And Sheila, you're more than welcome to um, uh, put uh, the website. <laughs> She's laughing at the way, sorry, uh, the way I pronounced that. You're welcome to add your website uh, into the chat there as well so people can check you out. Uh, we do have uh, your Facebook page in the description as well, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, but uh, Sheila mentions that this song is about uh, anytime we practice cruelty. Uh, there's no doubt we do and will. And she says, let's do our best to keep it to a minimum. So uh, this is uh, a writing partnership kept the pipe part by circumstance so Curtis and Sheila uh, are back together to record and it's uh, the song The Crime uh, so it was co-written in the 1980s um, is that is that I hope that's all this is all correct information Sheila <laughs> I took it from your uh, site of course uh, so at first with uh, it was written with uh, a funk feel um, so these fortright lyrics have found their place uh, in the gentle rock of reggae created by Curtis and Sheila. Absolutely awesome. And I'm not going to try and pronounce that last name again because I'm just going to make an arse of it. So um, Sheila, uh, really looking forward to playing this track for everybody. Uh, it's called The Crime. Uh, it's on Sheila's uh, SoundCloud. Uh, so you're welcome to check out the her SoundCloud page as well. Uh, let me just prop this up here. Let's see if I can get that nicely fitted. Eh, it's not the best. Oh, let's see how we can do it. Let's. There you go.
All right, so that was Sheila, Gila, and um, her accomplice, Curtis. And uh, that was The Crime. What an awesome track, uh, Sheila. Really enjoyed that. I wasn't expecting reggae uh, from yourself. And um, yeah, just really cool. London reggae. Yeah, really cool vibe. And a really interesting story about it as well, um, that it was written quite a while ago. Uh, so it's just really cool to kind of get a backstory as well to some music as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Yeah, it looks like everybody's enjoying that in the chat. So that's absolutely fantastic, guys. My job's done. I can leave now. Um, we've got one more track to play. I'm just thinking we've got five minutes. So yeah, I think I think we'll throw on one more track. Um, I'll just give a quick um, mention anyway, guys, um, that we are having Alex J. Burns from uh, Alex J. Burn from La Chats on in about five minutes. So he's our first guest. Uh, so we're gonna have an awesome chat. We're gonna flip the tables because he's always interviewing people uh, so we're going to interview him and check out what his story is and he has a very interesting story i have to say and um, so do stay tuned in for that so that's in a couple of minutes uh, and then we've got the full uh the, all the members from kind so all five of them are going to join me on zoom so that's going to be absolutely crazy uh, so that'll be at about half seven and uh yeah we're also getting an exclusive from kind right uh their song is coming out we don't know when they didn't tell us when but we're, get, we're gonna have it played here on Demar's Live exclusively, so you guys are gonna hear it for the first time. You're gonna be one of the first few uh, to hear it. I've heard it three times already, so uh, you just have some catching up to do. So stay tuned and uh, check it out. It's an absolute cracker, guys. If you no kind already, uh, you know almost what to expect from them, but this is just mind-blowing, just like all their other tracks. So um, uh, I do recommend just hang on. Um, what else do we have? We have some great stuff. We have uh, the Max Factor as well, so I'm so happy to see Max Factor back with us. Um, and we've got uh, Paul Down his gaming corner as well and uh, we've, we had a little break from that as well so really happy to have Paul back with us for that um, and then we're going to close off with some live soundtrack gaming I don't know what I want to call it it's, it's all the three mashed together it's gaming and live music um, with Dario Rodiguero so remember we used to do that back in the day um, back in the day I mean it was back in October maybe or I don't remember when. Time is weird these days. Uh, but we used to play, um, ha invite musicians on, and then I'd play a game and they'd do the soundtrack for it. So we're basically doing the same thing. Um, so do stay tuned. We've got a lot of stuff coming up, guys. Um, what do we have? Three minutes left. Do you know what? Do you know what? Maximilian Foy can't wait. That's great. And Sheila, our debut with the crime. Thank you so much. Dude, Sheila, absolutely my pleasure. Listen, anytime, stay in touch. And uh, best of luck with that release. I really hope um, it goes well for you. And I hope it goes far as much as it deserves, you know. And Tommy, that's the same with yourself, brother. Um, yeah, some great lyrics um, as well in that track, I have to say. Uh, cool, guys. All right, let's let's whack on one more track. we got three minutes. Um Look, you know, if the show's not delayed, it's, it's not the show, right? It has to be delayed. So Tristan O'Donovan and uh, Bottle of Red, uh, which is just, it's oh, it's just so me last year, you know, a nice bottle of red. I don't know about you guys, what colour you go for. Uh, but uh, he's a singer-songwriter from Cork. Uh, he comes from a background steeped in music, uh, with his late father being a well-known musician and his mother a dance teacher. So Tristan's father passed away when he was only 12 years old. Uh, which uh, in turn made Tristan pick up his father's guitars and start practicing and learning at home. Uh, so our, there are very, uh, uh, these are very the very guitars he uses today to write and play his music. Uh, he's also gained some airplay thanks to the attention of Jenny Green, who selected it for track of the week, RTE 2FM. In addition to RTE, he also um, was covered by Cork, BEO uh, Magazine and Buzz.ie. Um, so yeah, uh, the track is called Bottle of Red uh, by Tristan O'Donovan and another uh, uh, beautiful but um, bittersweet, I suppose, in a way, um, uh, backstory uh, to uh, Tristan's uh, life there as a musician. So uh, yeah, very interesting uh, guy. Really hope to hear more from Tristan and uh, let's hear a little bit of his tunes now. And then we're going to have uh, Alex uh, J. Byrne just straight after this, guys. So uh, stay tuned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Girl, I know it's been a while since I hit your phone, but I've been on a different vibe. I've been flying low. I found a place where no time exists. Girl, I think it's what you need. You should visit it. I got a little quiet cabin in an Asian woods where the stars are bright and the vibes are good. You're welcome every night. Is that understood? Yeah. Good food and a bottle of red. We let the dance. 
dance moves just take us to fear I turn the lights off and then I'll kiss you again I won't tell you anything, but you'll be telling your friends hey, Good food and a bottle of red We let the dance moves just take us to fear I turn the lights off and then I'll kiss you again I won't tell you anything, but you'll be telling your friends hey, Lately I've been distant, I'm just busy being Tristan All these songs I just got written Well I hope that you would listen With a bottle of wine and some chocolates We can have a good time Have you got my drip? With a bottle of wine and a big fat slip We can have a good time If you're rope for it We spoke last, but the time has been going fast I'm trying to make my music slap If you like it, you can sing it back I've been focused on the moment, not been focused on my phone Cause I've been way up in the zone, sleeping in the studio But I think I need some inspiration Won't you join my good vibration? Think I need some inspiration Won't you join my good vibration? Good food and a bottle of red We let the dance moves just take us to bed I turn the lights up and then I'll kiss you again I won't tell you anything But you'll be telling your friends hey, Good food and a bottle of red We let the dance moves just take us to bed I turn the lights up and then I'll kiss you again I won't tell you anything But you'll be telling your friends Yeah All right, so our last bit of music uh, playlist, our last bit of music from New Music Playlist uh, to start off the show, guys, and that was Tristan O'Donovan with Butler Red. Yes, the tunes are quite chill today. I don't know. It just happened by accident. It always happens by accident. I like the way there seems to be a theme uh, to the show today as well. Uh, so really loving that, guys. It just happens naturally, and it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving that you are liking the tracks today, and it's all fitting into perhaps everybody's vibe. I don't know. I'm feeling kind of chill today myself. Or maybe not. I don't know. I'm kind of excited too. So I'm kind of trying to find the balance. But anyway, our next guest, guys, let's let's kick into it. Alex J. Byrne, guys. And uh, for those of you that don't know him, uh, he's on Le Chats. He is known from Le Chats. I'm sure he is, do. Loads of you have been on Le Chats already uh, in the crowd there. Um, I know Brew's been on Le Chats. Brew, have you been on Le Chats, actually? I wonder, have you been on Le Chats? you got to check it out. It's a great, great show that he hosts. And um, it's on... Uh, on Facebook and uh, but anyway uh, Alex J. Byrne he's a comedian and actor from Dublin who's been performing comedy for the last couple of years about four years he's also been involved with numerous projects including plays short films and even web series uh, so after attending a course in Gaiety School he was inspired and advised to do comedy so from there on he performed comedy across four different countries Canada US England and across Ireland uh, recently he set up his own live stream to show um I guess the struggles of uh, artists and their views uh, on the lockdown itself. And I think it's fantastic. Um, he did it during the second lockdown, I believe. Uh, so, uh, he, and he's interviewed numerous, numerous guests. And I will be on the show as well, I think, in a week's time. So it's great. We're timing this absolutely uh, perfectly, as always, guys. You know, this was all, you know, planned all for you guys. Uh, so please welcome our very first guest, um, Alex Byrne. How are you keeping, buddy? You good? Yeah, I'm doing great. Great to have you on the show finally. What's cracking? 
Not much, man, and you are indeed correct. You know, your intro for me was so nice, and I was like, wow, I think I, I, think I like him myself. I think he sounds like a great guy. And then, um, yes, you are, in fact, we can reveal here you are, in fact, live on the chats next week. And, you know, I'm buzzing to be here, man. Thanks so much for having me on. Jeez, I feel like I'm on your show already, man. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> I've watched your show so many times. And I think it's fantastic what you're doing, man. And, and you can see people's responses already. You know, they're really um, resonating towards what you're doing. So it, it, it's amazing how intuitive almost it was. Uh, tell us a little bit about sort of i guess let's just dig into the chats first and then we'll talk a bit about some of your past and stuff so tell us like that moment uh that it happened when you started doing it the way it actually happened was was quite funny because during the first lockdown i love the way we're numbering these now by the way it's like lockdown was that one two or three i prefer the first after lockdown. <laughs> but, um, and, uh, what happened to me was um i with the first lockdown i was doing a daily joke i have a little tommy cooper joke book up here beside me on my bookshelf i have a bookshelf i'm cool wow wow and it was a case of <laughs> i was kind of like uh, i was saying a joke every day like tommy cooper and i did that and kind of it, it played its part and then when we got like another lockdown a friend of mine messaged me and said hey alex you know i really enjoyed your jokes during the first lockdown i really hope you're going to be doing something to, i suppose online keepers entertained and i was like okay well you know i've already done the daily joke i was like so what should i do and I still remember it was 10 o'clock on a Friday morning. I was sitting on my job and I was sitting there and I was just thinking to myself, hmm, what could I do? And then I was like, I could do a chat show. Yeah. Then I was like, no, nah, I couldn't do a chat show. I don't know how to do a chat show. <laughs> then I was like, but if I did a chat show, what would it be called? I'd probably call it La Chats. It's stupid name. Call it that? <laughs> don't call it that. It's a very stupid name. Like, why? Yeah. Yeah, probably. And besides, nobody would want to be on it. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody was to be on it though who, who would we invite like who would it be I don't know your mate's not mine and then within the hour I was actually messaging uh, my friend Jack Jack McKenna who show you to check out as well on a Monday guys Rascal Comedy really nice show I was messaging Jack within the hour going hey Jack I'm going to be starting a chat show next Thursday do you want to be my first guest it's called the chats brilliant and uh, yeah just from there it went the first show was um, October 29th and then um, Thursday just got a couple of days ago we did our 21st episode brilliant congratulations and I love how I love how you went through that as well and uh it was it was quite entertaining as well how you did it and uh and, and also I totally get that you know that whole sort of sp it's spur of the moment but it's almost intuitive mm. uh, you, you just kind of went with the flow and and I, I'm quite like that myself you know where you just kind of say it feels right to do uh you, you get a consultation from a friend or two you know because that's always good to get feedback yeah. and then ultimately you make that decision yourself and um, because it, it came from you and and it was your heart speaking out that something needs to be done. And I'm sure it's great for yourself. I mean, I'm sure you've learned a lot from now you're hitting 20 uh, episodes. And, and, you know, just like myself, you know, I've learned so much from my guests. Every guest gives something uh, back to me as much as, you know, you give to them uh, with regard to having a platform. Um, what, like not being a musician, of course, you know, you're a comedian, you're an actor, mm -hmm. um, you're, you're a performer in different ways. Uh, was there something that you sort of learned different from like musicians or was your, was your mind opened up in any way towards music? music or or how, were you kind of inclined towards music in any way by chatting to musicians a little bit oh yeah 100 percent. like i've had a few great musicians on the show and i know you mentioned brew in the kind of introduction there brew has been on the show and he was a great guest as well mm. um yeah like just from speaking to musicians i suppose like i like i don't have a musical bone in my entire body that's why i had to learn how to be funny. a lot of comedians so, say that that seems to be like a, a trending thing you know mm. But um, what happened was, though, like I suppose to speaking to different musicians, I've learned kind of, you know, the top rest that goes into making music because, you know, for me, like the music making process, you know, from like getting notes and like music and the lyrics and putting the words on the song, it just it boggles my mind. So it's so kind of, I suppose, intriguing to hear how musicians feel about their own live performances as well and like how, you know, they're not affected by not having the live crowd and how it's so different for them because usually it's like, you know, they release the album, then they test it out in the live crowd and kind of so similar to jokes with a comedian. Like mm. we write jokes and we test them out in the live crowd. So it's been so nice to kind of, I suppose, talk to musicians and that. And also the big thing for me with the chats is as much as I enjoy doing it, I've met so many great people doing it. Like I've met the likes of yourself. I've met Rebecca, who I know is heavily involved with your channel as well. Mm. I've met a few of the guests you've had on here as well. So, I mean, that's that's been wonderful. It's been so nice, I suppose, at a time where we're not allowed to go out and meet people that we know, to have that ability and that platform to connect with other people and artistic people mm. as well. It's just, same as yourself. I mean, it's just, it's a wonderful thing to be able to do. Absolutely, yeah. It's crazy because I, I think I've met more people 
this year almost through the show yeah. than I have in real life or at least bonded more with more people because in a bar yeah. it's kind of difficult you know because you're moving especially when you're gigging you know you, you're, you're thinking about your set it's hard to kind of be almost present sometimes because you're kind of thinking about being on stage when you're meeting people uh, but here it's very easy to be present because it's just you and, yeah. and, and the screen really and then you got the chat on the side um, but it, it's just much easier to kind of hone in on the person uh, which is amazing it, it was a beautiful uh, sort of thing to uncover um uh, <laughs> definitely as weird as it is right that yeah. like what the hell are we doing here doing this stuff <laughs> like it's just like <laughs> I, I, I just i don't even know what to make of it but i suppose it's kind of that silver lining isn't there there's always sort of a positive from you got to find the positive and, and you can see that you're you're one of those uh people um now with regard to yeah, go think, on sorry yeah i was sorry i was mm-hmm. just gonna say i just think with lockdown it was one of those um like lockdown is fairly tough. Like I mean, everybody's on it their own way. It's extremely tough, and I think it's impossible for anybody or anything to be operating at one hundred percent. So I kind of just sat and looked at it. There's two ways to go about it. I can either sit around and you know not do anything and just wait for things to come back to normal with the live shows, or else like yourself, you know, be proactive. Like have some sort of a presence and like similar to yourself like i've met so many people doing this and uh what's amazing is when we eventually back open i have so many different gigs to go to mm. i can't wait dude we're gonna be broke like <laughs> the amount of money we're gonna spend on gigs um so tell us a little bit about like your your backstory you know it's very interesting you did the gaiety school you did a couple of terms there and then um from my, from what i've read was uh you, you were inspired or you were advised as well to kind of go towards the, the comedy uh sector or tell us a little bit about that moment as well yeah, that was kind of a, uh, see, n- none of my decisions were ever straightforward, as you heard there from Aiken Lachat. So, like, I did the Gaiety School of Acting, I did their part-time course in the evening time, and I'd done a few kind of stage drama classes, and I really enjoyed it, but I found at the end I wasn't really sure where to go, mm. and I kind of spoke to, like, a few of the people I was in class with, I spoke to a few different actors and a few of the teachers, and they were all saying, look, you should try and do a bit of comedy, and, uh, it's actually a very good friend of mine, a guy named Paul, who's, you know, he's a guy who supported me for years and years and years, he said to me i can still remember we were walking home to my house one night and he said to me and i was like i'm thinking of doing comedy i don't know and he goes look you need to do it and i was like i don't know if i enjoyed or if i'd be any good and he actually gave me an ultimatum talk about this for motivation he said look i'm telling you now if you do not do comedy i will never speak to you again wow well <laughs> that well that, was, from that that's point, I was pretty like, good motivation okay, there we go i'm a comedian <laughs> well it's good you liked them right <laughs> if you didn't like him you'd be like <laughs> yeah whatever thinking- I'm just thinking with Paul, he, he was trying to look for an easy way out of our friendship. <laughs> he's looking at me in comedy like, oh, what have I unleashed on the world? It's like a double whammy. It's like, damn, I'm his friend. He's still my friend, then he's doing comedy. Uh, and that's interesting. So uh, obviously comedy is, is very different to do um, live streaming. It, it, it's impossible, is it, to do it? Like musicians can live stream and it's it's obviously not the same, but they can still do it. Like, But comedians, I don't see them doing it much. Like what's, what's the take on it? It's just, it's impossible to do it. Is it like stand up? Yeah, like it's it's hard enough to do. Like there are a couple of like weekly comedy shows online. Like I do like my show, the chats isn't really a comedy show. It's more it's a talk show like yourself. And then uh, there is a, on Monday nights there's a show called Rascal Comedy. It's run by a really nice guy called Jack McKenna. So he kind of has a few guests on and he chats to people. And they also do a kind of stand up set as well. And oh, on nice. Thursday nights at eight o'clock there's a show on Facebook called The Party Tits that also do a kind of like a live comedy podcast with a different team each week. So there are some comedians who are running their own kind of comedy shows each week Brilliant. and they're really really good and i recommend you guys checking them out too but um i find it is strange without an audience like i have done a couple of you know just strictly stand-up comedy gigs online and like they've been great i've got a chance to gig some really nice people but it's very it's very odd not having that audience feedback yeah because you know when you're kind of doing new jokes and doing new material it's kind of strange not to have that kind of well are they like and are they vibe and like are people watching this into this or not because you know it, there's not nice and as a comedian and probably same as a musician like when you're looking down you see people smile and then you know they're kind of they're reacting so well to what you're saying it gives you such a nice energy and i always feel like when that's happening i can't make a mistake i'm like the whole thing is going to go right now this is great when you're in that moment it's amazing and i think unless you've actually done it you can't really describe what it's like. And do, do you rewrite your jokes then in a different way, particularly for the live streams? Or do do comedians generally do that? Because you know the way you, some jokes have to have the crowd response, really. Mm. Um, have, you, have you kind of found a tactical way to sort of make it work for live streams? Yeah, like, I mean, there there is, I suppose, a way of testing new material because you get the feedback from the other comedians, which is, you know, it's still nice to have them as well. Mm. But, um, yeah, like, I've had to kind of maybe alter a couple of jokes. Like, uh, you know, I was, <laughs> if I leave with a whole, so where are we all from? I found that wasn't really getting much of a, much of a response. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah like so it, it's almost like an, an adaptive thing you're and i find you're all almost writing jokes 
to fit the live stream, if that makes sense. You're writing jokes saying, you know, well, will this work when there's no audience and will this work on, on screen with other people? So, mm. look, it, it's definitely an experience and it's definitely giving me a new view on how to write jokes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it is interesting because as well, I do some presenting, you know, it's just straight to the camera presenting job, like mm. beyond, behind, beyond the Damaris stuff. Um, and it does require a little bit of humor, you know, and just to ice break and stuff. And, and I'm trying to find ways of doing it without sort of like waiting for that laugh, because then you can feel I'm, I'm, I'm new to the sort of, you know, presentational stat, like the, mm. writing a sort of comedy piece within a speech, let's say that's that's something I'm trying to work on at the moment for, for one of my upcoming shows. And it's like, how do I make how do I navigate that? So it is interesting to see like how comedians are doing it because i remember you had sir steve as well right on the show and he mentioned yes. that as well because he did like obviously you know was doing so many shows and then i said to him like you know how how, how are you doing stuff now like you he's just like he just refuses to do any stand-up stuff uh recorded but he's doing videos you know so that's yes. there's, there's still that kind of thing was that something that ever interested you doing like recorded videos or skits and things like that because you're interested in acting as well of course mm. Well, I suppose I was doing that back in 2019. I was part of a kind of comedic web series. Like I was, uh, you know, involved with some other people. We were all kind of writing sketches. We were all kind of shooting sketches again. We were all kind of acting sketches. So I have done that. It's been a bit of fun. But um, like, I mean, it is great and something I'd be open to do in the future. Like it was something that I was starting to do last year with a couple of different actors. Mm. We were starting to record like a new web series. We were going to plan to put it up online this year. But just because due to the restrictions, like the fact is, um, like the sketch that I'm writing kind of involved multiple people. So like steve -O stuff is great. Like steve -O, again, you guys should check him out. So steve -O Timothy, his family -like character is brilliant. Mm. But um, kind of just, it, it's hard to do those kind of live sketches and like kind of write scenes when you need multiple actors because it's so hard trying to get people to do it in this current climate if that makes sense you know you need to try and find a location you need to have safe procedures in place but, yeah and then you know it can be hard some people you know they don't want to and i completely respect that but um ah, look it, it is something that's hard to do so i suppose kind of the online is the way to go now but um look i mean just recently last week a couple of weeks ago i started doing live instagram videos just a sketch with myself and jack from rascal comedy where you play a couple of farmers so just started that and that's going fun so we'll go on with that and see what happens anyway awesome awesome and that's your on your own personal instagram is it is it alex j yeah. burn is that your your handle on that one or it is i think i think it's alex.j awesome. i gotta be honest i'm not down with the kids i don't use instagram i know you're, as as I you, you were telling me that in the in the in the chat as well and you know i only i only got on to Twitter recently myself really like start like my own personal profile and stuff so yeah. it's it's quite normal to kind of omit a social media because like one is already quite you know it's invasive like it, it takes up a lot of time and, and you know it can be yeah. dangerous also because you can have your face glued to the feckin' thing without realizing uh, so no I totally understand it's it's handy for certain things but that's great you're doing stuff on Instagram live it's very easy to set up you just whip out your phone and 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 Bob's your uncle there you go you're you're live so um yeah definitely check out uh, follow Alex J Byrne as well on Instagram guys um, the link is um, yeah. we'll be making a chats page on Instagram soon I know I was chatting to yourself but I had to do that and uh, I promise it is coming for those of you who don't have a Facebook want to follow the chats on Instagram it is coming I promise it will be here that's great well possible. you heard it from the horse's mouth guys and it's on it's recorded as well so you can always uh, show him this video if he doesn't get around to it and say hey wait a minute you said that um, but it's great because yeah no, we have a couple of friends and, and people within Demars as well that don't use um, Facebook and, and that's totally fine you know because uh, people have different sort of uh, yeah reasons, I suppose, of, of using certain things. Uh, people are moving slowly away from Facebook, slowly but surely. Uh, but that's another story anyway. Um, but uh, what do we have? In the, so uh, Tommy Cullen says that um, every comic wants to be a musician and every musician thinks they're funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't agree with you more. That's great. That is a perfect analogy. And I think that is absolutely spot on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's also <laughs> followed you on Instagram there as well. So Tommy Cullen. Oh, thank uh, you very much. Tommy, I really another fantastic that. musician you should definitely have him on your show uh sometime so. um so tommy get in touch uh with alex uh, for sure like and, and and see if he has any space it's great so, so you're doing weekly shows right you're doing it every thursday tell us a little bit about the the scheduling and stuff so people can sort of sort of find you yeah so i mean we go live on facebook every thursday it's like it's com like your own show it's completely live like there's no because I, I can't edit the same my life as well i just so i can't be bothered be yeah no you're best off doing it live <laughs> but uh, yeah like so every thursday from 7 p.m till 8 p.m on facebook uh you can find it through the chats the actual handle is the chats talk show Brilliant. and uh, yeah so three guests every week you know it's 
comedians, musicians, actors, basically, and everything above and between and below. Anybody involved in the performing arts, the entertainment industry, I have them on. I talk to them about their work. I talk to them about how the pandemic has affected them and just kind of, you know, how they're coping, what they're doing, and just how they're getting on. And it's kind of, it's a, it's a nice platform for them because they can come on and basically discuss with me what's going on and you know how they've been affected and it also humanize them for the audience because like like the likes of yourself myself because like we'll talk to uh more people in the inter- in the entertainment industry in one day than most people will in a year Very true like there's just no two ways around it like it's what we're involved in so and there's always this kind of i think aura about it like if somebody's walking along and they see you know a camera something been shot on the side of the road everybody will stop and go i wonder what's going on there so mm. The fact that it's something like your own show that can bring people involved within that to the kind of accessibility and people can see what they're doing and what they're about and meet the person behind the actual act. I mean, I, I think it's great. And, you know, the act seem to enjoy it. The audience seem to love it so far. It's, it's an extremely casual chat. Like, I don't sit down and have, you know, a lot of questions prepared mm. because I find, you know, it makes... I have to listen. Like, I have to listen. Like, I'm listening anyway. But, you know, if I don't listen, I don't know what to ask. So I would basically force myself to be more of a conversationalist and um yeah, it's been great. There's three guests on every week, so just over, just over twenty episodes. So we've just chatted to just about over sixty people since October. That's amazing. Yeah, and it, it, it's it is quite casual. I really like that. It, it just feels like a nice. It's the chat. It's it's a nice casual chat. Um, it's not forced. Um, you're a great interviewer. You're 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 you. always laughing as well, which is really nice. It's very light hearted. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. um and 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 you're spreading positivity, which is fantastic. You know. Um, so what what's what's kind of like? Have have you had like a common like answer always like you know okay so i know that you know one of the sort of main things is kind of n- sort of seeing how artists and people are sort of dealing with the lockdown mm. right so have you had sort of like an answer that just kind of keeps coming back or from a, que- a random question that you ask or, or or whatever like is there is there a is there a what do you call it a fucking consistency i suppose in, in, in what people yeah. are saying about the lockdown and stuff like that maybe yeah well i suppose the one kind of consistency well there's two kind of consistency that people have the two consistencies that i find that you know it's frustrating in the sense that we don't know when it's going to come back like you know if we were told you can start doing your gigs again on you know say the 15th of june oh great 15th of june we only have this many months and then we can do that so and that's kind of annoying and it's hard to kind of stay i suppose a beat about that because like we don't know when it's going to come back and you know we don't know what kind of state the industry will be in and kind of leading into that as well the second kind of thing that keeps coming up as well as we love kind of my case doing the comedy musicians doing their music and the actors been on stage as well that is great doing the show a big common thing that people are saying and i feel it myself is that we we miss the other acts because although we're doing a show and we're getting our product out there and we're showing the audience our show and what we do we really miss kind of vibing off the other people like i know what a comedy gig i personally love you know the drive down the meeting the comedians beforehand chatting about people having a bit of laugh and a joke and then watching the show as well and i think it's you know it's the whole kind of community feeling that's kind of been missing mm. as well and that's true the chats like that's one thing i found to be fantastic that you know, all the new people I've met, including yourself, have been absolutely great. They've all been so helpful. They've said, look, I might know a guest you could have on here, say you do this, and give them bits and pieces of advice. So, I mean, mm. I think it's a wonderful community that we have within the performing kind of artistic industry here in Ireland and a lot of fairly talented people in it too. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, no, it's great how um, how close-knitted as well. Like, Ireland uh, is so small um, and um, it's nice to actually link in as well the comedic scene with the music and, and now I want to get into sort of the film personally, you know, the film industry as well. And I think it's really important to link all of these these sort of industries together, especially during these times, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what are, what are your plans for the for the future? Do you have? I know it's a stupid question. It's such a stupid question. Why did they even ask that question? Um, but do you have any plans? Anything else like outside of the chats, uh, like personally or anything like that? I know it's very it's very difficult to plan anything, but um, it is. Um, look, I suppose for now the only thing is that um, like the chat's going to keep going for now, and like people have said to me, like when we eventually get out of lockdown, do I continue? Do I plan to continue it on on a weekly basis? Mm. Yes, I do. Like I mean, you know, it's an online show, and the fact that you know people can watch it on Facebook and stuff like that, I like, plan to keep the same format because it's a format people seem to like and it's easy to access. So, mm. like even when we get out of lockdown, I still plan to keep on that going. In terms of myself, though, I suppose I just I want to like everybody else i just want to go back to doing my comedy i want to try and audition for some more roles and to be honest with you one thing that i've learned over the last year been here in ireland i don't know how you feel yourself is i need to go around and see more places like i didn't realize the freedom i had to go to these places until it was taken away so now i'm like god you know i can't wait to go to this place and this place and this place and just do it so i think now 
the situation that we're in, it's the best time now just to, you know, work, you know, save a bit of money, you know, write some stuff, you know, host the shows. And then when we're open up, when we can do what we want, hit it with a bang, mm-hmm. hit it as hard as we can and just hit the ground and go, boom, take off. Yeah, absolutely. And because and, you did travel a little bit, right? You traveled to a, a couple yes. of different countries and you've actually performed uh, stand up as well. So it was Canada, yeah. States and england was it the, the, the tree and then yeah I, I was fortunate enough like i started in comedy back in 2016 and within a month of my first uh within a month of my first month doing comedy i was going over to england actually to see a football match and i just messed a few people so looking i perform at your club and one of them got back to me and said yeah we'd love to have you on same with um same with up in uh, toronto up in canada i was headlining the club up there just outside toronto in brampton and last january I was in Florida visiting a few friends and I managed to headline a comedy club in Pensacola, Florida. And yeah, it was great. You wow. know, it's so nice kind of gigging in front of all the different audiences from all the different countries and just seeing how they differ. Yeah. And, and how, how do they differ actually the audiences? Like, do, can you, can you generalize or is that a bad thing to do? Yeah, no, that, that's fine. <laughs> like, I mean, kind of Ireland is one, like the audience is great. And like, I suppose you get a few more hecklers in Ireland, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, people are kind of shouting up a little bit more. I find that when I was gigging in England, they're a bit more kind of receptive. Like, they'll sit there quietly, and, like, when you tell a joke, you get a pretty good response. You get, like, more of a kind of, you know, an applause or something like that, and they're a lot more respectful. Um, with Toronto, I found that um, there were the odd hecklers, but um, <laughs> I'll just say it here, because, like, I know a few comedians from Toronto, and they are great, but some of the comedians there didn't really kind of deal with hecklers very well. Like, somebody would heckle them, and, you know, you expect a witty response. You might get a comedian going, oh, Shut up! I'm sitting there going, fair enough. <laughs> like I remember, um, I remember when I responded to a heckler. I, it was probably the biggest reaction I got from my set all night because um, I was talking about a girlfriend that I had. I was like, oh, it's like my girlfriend said this, my girlfriend said that, and one of the Canadians said, oh, hey, she sounds like a keeper. And straight away, I turned around and said, no, she actually plays in central midfield. <laughs> and the whole audience went, oh, my God, oh, my God, because they're just getting all these hecklers going, oh, stop it, yeah. And he was like, this guy's great. Wow. <laughs> that was like, I had them one for there. And then America, like, I thought the Americans were wonderful because, um, you know, I was staying over there with my friend Todd and his, uh, his girlfriend, Lally. And, you know, I was just basically saying to him, look, I'm doing this comedy gig this night. And... Um, you know, if you guys want to come, they're like, hey, we'll come. So they're like, we'll ask a few of our friends. You know, it can be hard to kind of motivate people to come to gigs sometimes. I don't think that would be a problem post-lockdown, but there you go. But um, it had been <laughs> <laughs> difficult from time to time. And then um, in America, though, like, uh, Todd was saying, like, oh, yeah, you know, I said it to my mates about your gig. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, about 20 of them coming. I was like, what? I was like, yeah. And I went to Todd. He's getting a tattoo them one day. I told his tattoo artist. He goes, oh, what's the link for your show? I said, there you go. He texted me like an hour later, go, oh yeah, I bought 15 tickets. I was like, oh my God. So what I loved about the American crowd was, you know, they were so enthusiastic and they were so kind of like upbeat about the comedy. Mm. And, you know, when you said I have a show on, like they went out of their way to actually go to that show. Like I had one of the guys <laughs> leaving work early just to come and see me. Wow. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. I feel like a celebrity. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Yeah, because here you'd, you'd have people interested, right? <laughs> and then on, on Facebook thing, and then uh, nobody would show up. And uh, but that's that's really cool. Maybe there's like, a, is there a status? Do you think in the states that people see as like sort of like a like a, a what what do you think about that actually? Because that that'd be an interesting thing to touch on before you have to go. Because you have to you have to go soon, right? You, you've got something at six o'clock. Uh, what time are we at? Seven, right? Seven. I still have a couple of minutes. I just think with the Americans, because um. I visited there and I've lived there in the past as well. I just find their general kind of demeanor is like, and what I love about the Americans is the ones that I've anyway, is like when you're doing something and when you're trying something out, they're extremely kind of, uh, they're extremely positive about it. Mm. Like whatever it is you say, oh, like I'm doing comedy or like in your case, I'm doing my talk show or anything like that. Like straight away, it's gen- genuine enthusiasm. They're like, oh, that sounds amazing. That sounds brilliant. Like I really want to check that out. The best it looks to you. Like I hope it goes well. Mm. And like, that's that's really, really nice. And it's very, so very authentic about it. And I really like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Here here sometimes, and, and we've spoken about it before with with people, There, there is kind of sometimes like a, a, be gr- a be grudgery or kind of like, even if it's between friends, do you know what I mean? So it's like, oh, yeah. why are you doing doing that that's a load of you know it's not as bad but it, it can happen you know um it's an interesting mentality example of that i saw was in republic Italy. they did a sketch of two lads in the bar and uh, there was one for the gun oh, i got a new job today oh well done he's kind of steady, like, yeah yeah and then it was like the next one the same two lads he's like oh i got a new car oh fair play oh. <laughs> so i don't know like look i mean I, I don't know like a lot of people have been positive kind of with the chats and all that and like the audience uh the feedback has been great from the guests and everything like that so a lot of positive here, here too. It's just um, it, it's hard at the moment for people to be positive with the lockdown, but there is positivity out there. And as you said, you know, spread it. It's easy to be kind of uh, negative and spread that as well. But I said with the chats, like, no, let's let's do something positive. Let's 
give something that people can enjoy. That's awesome, brother. Listen, what a way to close uh, this uh, chat. And uh, listen, it's an absolute pleasure just to chat with you. It was long overdue. Um, Claire Claire had wrote a lovely piece uh, for you as well on the Demars magazine. So that was the first time I actually got to know you uh, by reading that piece. And uh, it was really nice to just just kind of get to finally get around to, to having a chat with you. So I'm looking forward. We're chatting next week, right? Yes, we are. I can reveal like a worldwide exclusive for <laughs> I love my exclusives show. here, yes. <laughs> worldwide exclusive. <laughs> but you had one already. I'm going to have an Instagram page. That is a worldwide exclusive. A second worldwide Amazing. exclusive is you will be my final guest uh, this week on the chats on Thursday. So, guys, check it out on the chats Thursday from 7 to 8, featuring this man here, Kozak, as the final guest. Absolutely. Cannot wait. The tables are going to flip, and uh, we're going to see what he, what kind of <laughs> questions he asks me. So, awesome. Alex J. Byrne, listen, absolute pleasure. Have a great Saturday evening, and I'll talk to you very soon. Talk to you on Thursday. You too, man. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Looking forward to it, mate. My Bye. pleasure. Bye bye. All right, guys, that was the awesome Alex J. Byrne uh, from Le Chats. Uh, do follow uh, his page. I have uh, left it into the description there. So I, I think I have Le Chats there. It should be there in the description. So do check it out. And I will be on that show next Thursday evening as well. Uh, let us know what you thought about that conversation. I thought it was absolutely wonderful. It was so nice uh, to chat to Alex. Uh, finally, um, we had him featured, as I mentioned, on the Demars magazine uh, a couple of months ago by our, our own Claire Nolan. And... Um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's going to be great to, to be on his show uh, for a change. Uh, Dave says, Alex, what have you let yourself in for? I'm going to relax with the rants. I promise uh, Dave was witness to my very first interview. Well, my second interview ever, I think it was, or, you know, of, of most recent uh, years. And uh, on Keith McLaughlin's show, uh, where I just went into a massive rant about the lockdown. And um, but I don't do that anymore, guys. That's I don't do that. Or do I? Who? <laughs> well, you'll have to tune in on Thursday on the chats to find out, guys. So thanks for staying tuned in, guys. We got another. We got loads more ahead of us, so we're, we're not even halfway through our show. And uh, we're going to have Kind, the full band in, at half seven, so in 30 minutes. Uh, so we're going to do some uh, Max Factor at the moment. So uh, Maximilian Foy presenting his wonderful segment. Um, and it's just a collection of uh, different things, art and entertainment, uh, presented with such flair, with such magnitude um, and such personality that is uh, Maximilian Foy. So let me load this one up, guys. So don't go anywhere. Um uh, we've got loads of content ahead of us, so uh, yeah, let me just slap this up for you there, guys. All right. That's the content we all want, ranting calls. Like, yeah, you say that now. What's up everybody, my name is Maximilian Foy, the king of the wilderness, the queen of the nighttime world, and you are very, very welcome to The Max Factor, the show that takes a look at some of the most promising independent entertainers on the scene today in Ireland and beyond. So today's episode is one I've been looking forward to for a long time as it concerns an industry that I'm very, 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 very familiar with. It's going to be a blast, so if you like what you see, slam that subscribe button and share the love. And if you'd like to contribute to my upkeep uh, of my channel and of me, uh, you can do so at the PayPal link below. So without further ado, I am going to introduce you to the most fabulous drag house in the whole of Ireland. Yes, that's right. Today's Max Factor deals with the fabulous house of Maki A. So where to start? Oh my God, I've got so much to tell you. And so as you may know, Ireland has been a hotbed for alternative entertainment for many, many years now. And at the head of the table has been this country's renowned drag circuit. It seems like every major town and city is just chock full of colourful drag talent and stars such as Panty Bliss, Shirley Temple Bar, Veda and so many more have not only become household names here but also cultural Irish icons. However, a new generation of queens are emerging from the underground looking to take their place under the spotlight. Young, vibrant performers whose flair for cutting edge entertainment is matched only by their fabulous makeup skills. 
In August 2017, Maki Al began with her now annual Vogue Ball, which saw many queer artists make their performing debut, including their first ever winner, Liam B. Founded and hosted by the undeniable force of nature that is Candy Warhol, the show boasts a diverse cast of characters, which includes Mia Gold, Letitia Nassin, Nettles, and the aforementioned Liam B., as well as Ireland's leading AFAB queen, the absolutely sensational Maud Gone Wrong. The Machia lineup is always expanding, and newcomers come and go like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Just ask Victoria Lodge, Crystal Queer, and Lucina Shining to name but a few. Initially launched as a response to the lack of queer spaces in Cork City, the show has gone from strength to strength in just three years, with regular cabaret and club nights, as well as sell-out national shows. In 2020, the group even performed at the prestigious Super Bowl in Amsterdam, along with nine other leading European drag houses. Last year, the group's Vogue Ball was featured on TV3, and 2001 will see them take over the airwaves with a stunning RTE documentary that is sure to propel Machia onto even greater heights. All I want to know is who the fuck does she think she is coming all up in here looking like that? Look at that. She a family bitch. Look at that. Hey, family bitch, where you get that weed? Where you get the stripper heel? Where you get the nails did? You gon' drop that mix and say, you gon' sink that Britney shit. You gon' kill her on way. Once you took that dick, Amazing House of Machia putting the Max Factor in the Max Factor. So please go and check them out. They're an amazing group of performers. I've been to see them. It was one of the best drag shows I've ever seen in my life. And I've seen an amazing amount of drag shows in my day. So fair play to Candy Warhol, the house mother of this incredible group. And you can check Candy out every week on the Friends of Dorothy podcast with just little old me and uh, Kiki Sinclair. And uh, this week we interviewed the amazing British queen, uh, Taylor Trash, and Mara Wilson of none other than Mrs. Doubtfire, Matilda, Miracle on 34th Street. What are you waiting for? Check it out. So, folks, that's it. Another Max Factor in the bag. I, of course, am Maximilian Foy. That's at Maximilian underscore Foy. 
and you can check out all my other projects uh, on Spotify where you can listen to some good old fashioned rock and roll with Cell Games. We got another single coming out very soon. But if you want to get down with the Lament configuration uh, with all the cool kids, uh, please check that out. We also got Murder Most Irish, of course, Ireland's number one true crime podcast. And this week, uh, Rocket from the Crypt and Sarah Jane Heffernan are discussing the disappearance of Shergar. Is it a murder? Is it a missing horse? We'll never know. So thanks so much again, folks, for dropping in. I'm going to give you back to that Mr. Kozak man. Bye for now. Absolutely awesome. Another fantastic Max Factor by Maximilian Foy. Of course, himself. Uh, what an absolute legend. And uh, yeah, abs- that was absolutely fantastic. I would love to be at a show like that, guys. Uh, let us know in the comment section uh, what you thought of this week's Max Factor. It's so great to have you back as well, Max. Uh, so happy to have you back onto the show uh, this week. I've missed it. I've missed that personality of yours, brother. And um, yeah, absolutely awesome. Guys, you look like you absolutely love that. Um, so definitely check out more of Max million for you guys and by the way all that music you heard there as well was by him and um cell games as well another fantastic project that he has just started recently with his friend tristan o'carroll and uh, lament configuration being their most recent uh, their most their debut track full stop um so i'm just going to post in um on the, U- the youtube channel max i didn't throw you into the description there uh but there is maximilian foy's youtube page guys you can oh sorry his yeah it's his youtube channel click on that now and subscribe don't waste any more time guys slap that link get that link into you uh, it'll open up in a new uh, tab don't worry it's not a virus it's safe there you go demars entertainment posted that there and uh, give him a sub uh, he's releasing all of his max factors there now as well um so you can get updated and you can find all the, all the archives of all the Max Factors as well. So Bruce says, I want to party with Max Factor. Of course you do. Everybody does. So let's have a Max Factor party after the lockdown, guys. I think that's the first thing we need to do is actually do a Max Factor party. So um, Kobara saying lyrics are on fleek. Uh, Bruce saying, um, yeah, uh, looks like a great night. Uh, Maximilian Foy is the virus. Uh, <laughs> um... Viking promotions, I'll always contribute to your upkeep. These queens are a dream. They made my week at Cypress Avenue. Yes, they, of course, they performed at Cypress Avenue uh, where Rebecca was doing a stint as well. Sheila says, looks like a great night out. Absolutely. Uh, Kobara says, oh my God, this is epic. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's just so, so much fun. Um, I have to go out on a night out. This is a night out with Maximilian Foy. Let's do it. Maxi down. We got to do this, man. It's been a long time. Been a long, long time. We have to wait until the, everything opens up, of course. But um, uh, I'm already getting excited about that. Jesus. All right, there you go. Um, so we're actually live on Twitch as well, guys, by the way. So um, if you are more Twitch inclined, uh, we will be on Twitch as well. Actually, we're not going to switch tonight. We're actually going to stay on the platforms tonight, I believe. Uh, we're going to be doing our... Uh, Live music today by Dario Roddy Guerrero. It's going to be awesome. He's going to be live on his Twitch channel. And uh, we're going to be playing some games. You guys can decide what game I play. To be honest, I don't really care. And uh, he's going to be playing some music. He's actually going to be playing Beats. So, uh, and uh, I don't know if he's going to give away the beats, but normally he gives away the beats uh, if you guys uh, deserve it in some way. I don't know how he decides that, but it's really interesting. And uh, we're listening to Dario Roddy Guerrero. By the way, if you don't know by now... Um, this is his music playing in the background. And uh, we've got Kind already in the chat. So Kind, these are very, very welcome. Great to see us in the chat already uh, with an amazing Maximilian. I'm glad you've got to see uh, Maximilian Foy's uh, awesome segment there, guys. So uh, we've got another fantastic segment ahead of us. We've got the Downies uh, Gaming Corner. Uh, which is going to talk about all things gaming. So I'm going to play that for you very shortly. Uh, just wanted to take a break to um, see if everybody's okay and see if everybody's having a good time. If you've enjoyed our first guest, and uh, we're going to be joined by Kind very shortly in, uh, what do we have, 17 minutes? That seems like ages away. In 17 minutes, we're going to be joined by the full band. Oh my God, what's going to happen, guys? Five of yous. Oh, are we gonna? Are we gonna? I don't know how this is gonna happen. How this is gonna work? Uh, but uh, <laughs> it's gonna be messy. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be fun. So stay tuned in, guys. And we're gonna get an exclusive um, of their upcoming release. Um, so you don't go anywhere, guys. You are gonna listen to an exclusive tune by Kind uh, that no one else, not many, have listened to. And like I said, I've listened to it about three times already. So you guys have to catch up. Uh, so um, it's only here on Demar's Live you are gonna hear it. So um, I love these exclusives. Paul Downey says, Beats, Bears, Battlestar Galactica. What a triple B. Hitting the trifecta there you are. 
Uh, absolutely. Sheila says, I'll catch you, Maximilian. What, are you going to catch him, like, you know, in your arms or in, in what kind of way? Uh, we thrive in chaos, Kozak. Absolutely, yeah, sure. I guess we do, you know. I was trying to avoid chaos for a little bit, but I guess it's just not going to happen. You just have to fucking roll with the punches, as they say, and uh, if, if it's chaos, it is chaos then. Um, I suppose it's handy being maybe the eye of the storm, you know. I want to be the, the calmness and the chaos around me. I think that's quite ideal, uh, perhaps. Uh, but Rebecca Cappuccini in the house of Viking Promotions. Rebecca, it's great to uh, see you there. And uh, No Local 32 this week, but um, we will be back again, guys. We're actually going to be doing no show um, next Saturday, but we're going to be doing our one-year celebration. It's been one year of the Mars Live, guys. It's been an amazing journey, um, and it was uh, it's on the 8th of where are we at april geez we're already in april guys it's spring fuck's sake that's mad we got out of that winter pretty mostly grand right unscathed um but uh 8th of april right 8th of april we have um one year celebration it's a thursday we're going to have a show jam-packed, jam-packed of stuff, right? More jam-packed than this one. We're going to have loads of guests. We're going to have guests that we had on the first show. I haven't even asked them yet. I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't planned anything yet, but it's all in my head right now. And we're going to do some great stuff, guys. So um, keep that in mind. And um, Dave, no one, no one is going to... I'm not going to call that out because um, <laughs> it's terrible, first of all. Um, Sheila says, like a virus, ha, ha, ha. April 8th, lads, imagine that. Yes, I know, I know, I know. I can't wait. Uh, for April 8th, it's going to be amazing, and, um, yeah, yeah, it should be, should be awesome, so look, uh, without further ado, let's, let's get on, um, we met on the 19th, yeah, geez, so 19th of April, myself and Rebecca, uh, met for the very first time, uh, we were introduced to each other by Claire Nolan, our mutual friend, which is interesting, because I had Claire on the Demars Live, she must have been maybe the second guest, uh, on the show, probably on Demar's Live, and then she recommended yourself. Isn't that crazy? And then I hopped on to uh, Viking Promotions, which was um, a creative cabin fever, right? Which was probably my first interview in years. I think the last interview I did was actually speaking to Dave Duggan there. Um, damn it. <laughs> nice try, Dave. Nice try. Um, with Claire McDonald interviewed me for Rockstar Karaoke a couple of years ago. That would have been like one of the first interviews I've ever done. So now I, now I think in the last three weeks, I think I've done about five interviews. So uh, there's another one coming out, by the way, with Hot Hits. Um, and the uh, most recent one was with Dave Duggan there, 369 with Gary Gibson. Uh, really, really, really enjoyed that chat. So do check it out if you haven't already, guys. Um, and that's all on my Kozak Demars uh, Facebook page. Uh, you can probably find it through Demars and stuff like that. Um, and we've also got, yeah, Dave says, why don't we have it on April 1st? Uh, because it's not a year. It's April 8th is exactly the year that we actually did it. So, um, uh, yeah, show us that video, Dave. That'll be interesting to see, actually. And uh, also, just a quick uh, update as well for you guys. Uh, the Transmission TV is officially launching this Friday on the 2nd of April. Yes, the day after the April 1st. Thank God it landed like that because we're, we're meant to do it every Friday. Uh, so we would have had to do it anyway on, on whatever date, whatever number that would have been. So it was a close one. We just we just got away with it. Uh, but Transmission TV, guys, tune in to that. It's going to be absolutely amazing. It's there in the link tree. You'll find it. And uh, the video is already up on YouTube. So you can already set a reminder on that. Fuck it, you know what? I'm going to do it now. I hope I'm not too late. No, we, we've got time, guys. We've got time. Let me slap on some music here. Um, but I need just to check this out, guys. It's going to be amazing. Our first guests are uh, Banya and Ailsha Davy, And uh, we've had some great pre-records. Amazing music from Tsunami Studios, guys. We, we put in a lot of hard work into this. This is like Demar's live on steroids like it's crazy i got a desk I'm, well, i didn't get a desk yet but anyway i'm spoiling the phrase here I'm, I'm saying too much but um it's gonna be fantastic it's gonna be like a live proper live talk show guys and um really looking forward to uh seeing what just thinks so friday night 7 p.m and uh let me share the link for you so you can actually um let me see if the video is actually up right let me throw this up to you Ashley Mobasser with a woohoo! Yes, Ashley, absolutely. 31st is my birthday, David Duggan. There you go. The day before uh, April Fool's Day. That's very lucky as well, Jesus. Reminder for all of you watching, follow Kozak on Twitch. Great stream with Paul. You're very kind. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate that. You're an absolute legend, man. And follow Paul Downey. Paul, slap in, um, in your YouTube there, man, by the way. I need to get those YouTubes off you guys because 
I haven't been putting them into the des descriptions. I need to, um, I need to do that. We're gonna have Gaming Corner in a couple of seconds. I'm just gonna throw in a link for you, so, uh, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We got loads of stuff happening now in a couple of minutes. Kind are gonna pop on. Uh, we're gonna have Gaming Corner. We're gonna have, uh, Dario as well. Dario Roddy Guerrero. What an absolute legend as well. Uh, popping on for a live soundtrack. We we're really spoiled today with content. Um, so this is our, uh, Transmission TV, uh, which is going out live. We're gonna have a live interview. So the interview is completely live in the studio. Um, so anything can go wrong. So tune in at 7 p.m. next Friday. There's the link. Set a reminder, guys. And uh, it'd be great to see you there in the comment section. Really, it's a lot of work has been put into it. The studio, uh, as Paul knows, as some of you know, the amount of work put into that studio as well by the lads was absolutely astounding. So uh, you are really going to enjoy it. A lot of work was uh, was really put into it. So um, yeah. Uh, Peter Johnson and lead actor Richard Batterson. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be doing some skits as well. We've got some skits in between. That's from our New Year's Eve skit, um, <laughs> which was done in like a few hours. By the way, we did that very quickly. Hence the low brownness of it. Um, but a lot of crack, a lot of crack ahead of us. So um, yeah, all right, guys. So tsunami is gorgeous. Yeah, it is an absolutely beautiful uh, studio. It's unbelievable. Like how they managed to make it look so well and sound so well as well. Uh, they're actually recording Jailbirds at the moment, uh, so that's exciting times as well. We're going to get some updates from Jailbirds very, very soon with some releases. I actually heard a couple of their songs already, I'll have to say. I, I couldn't resist, I had to say it, and they're it's unbelievable, guys. I can't say anymore, but... Um, yeah, it's just it's it's just going to be amazing what you're going to hear from Jailbirds very soon. So they're going to be coming onto the show obviously again uh, to promote that uh, later in the year. And um, yeah, that's that's kind of like the Demar's news, I suppose. If there's anything else, lads, let me know in the comments. Um, how is it all keeping? How's your Saturday going? How's your weekend been? You know, it's been a nice and chillax, I, I suppose, hasn't it? it just, <laughs> uh, and that's maybe a good thing, you know, in a world like this, uh, for it to be chillax. You know, it's more than you can ask for. So anyway, uh, without further ado, guys, let's get some gaming news into us. Like, I'm, I'm really in the mood for for some gaming news, and it's delivered by our very own Paul Downey, who's in the chat there. And uh, Paul, sh throw in your um, throw in your YouTube page. Let me throw it in for you because you're very modest. So um, I'm going to throw in your YouTube page channel. I keep calling it a page, but it's actually a channel, right? Um, let's see if I can do that. That's that's Paul Downey there, right? So I hope you I hope you subscribe to Transmission TV, guys, up there at the top. That's that's the exclusive uh, video, and then Paul Downey's channel's just there. Um, so let's kick into it. Brew wants his Atari back. Well, who took it from you? I don't have it. Maybe it was all that that wine you were drinking earlier, Brew. You think you lost it, but it's probably somewhere. Underneath your bed or something, you know? Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to my gaming corner. I am Paul Downey and it's very nice to have you back here after a little break. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff to go through because it's been a couple of weeks. So here's just a couple of news segments for you in the world of gaming. So to start things off, we have some good news for PlayStation owners. Uh, this time last year, PlayStation and Sony announced the Play at Home initiative, which was offering PlayStation owners some free games um, for you to uh, encourage to be stay at home and play these games uh, during the pandemic. Well, that initially started last April with the Uncharted collection and with Journey, and it looks like a year on, they're actually expanding this a little bit more uh, just a couple weeks ago, they gave out Ratchet and Clank, the 2016 edition, for free, again, no extra charge, and they're adding further to that library of free games to keep you at home, uh, and it's a very extensive list, actually nine games that they've added, and those games include Abzu, Astrobot Rescue Mission, Enter the Gungeon, Moss, Paper Beasts, Res Infinite, Subnautica, The Witness, and Pumper. This is, of course, beyond any subscription service. You don't have to pay for any of it. You don't have to be subscribed to PlayStation Now or PlayStation Plus or anything. If you just have a PlayStation at home, you can go online and download these completely for free and play them for as long as you like. 
uh, or don't, it's up to you. But there's some significant releases on that, you know, Subnautica is one that comes to mind as being a real sort of premier, premium kind of game, as well as Enter the Gungeon, and there's actually uh, even a couple of uh, virtual reality titles there, like Moss, that you can give a go if you have a VR headset. This is also the third video in a row where I can tell you that Final Fantasy VII Remake still hasn't had a PC port announcement. Speaking of PlayStation VR, just a couple of weeks ago, PlayStation and Sony announced that they are working on the PlayStation VR 2 for the PlayStation 5. So those of you who are lucky enough to have a PlayStation 5, now you'll also have to be in <laughs> with a draw, lucky enough to get a PlayStation VR 2. They very nonchalantly kind of just announced it on their Twitter or on like a Sony PlayStation blog or something, but um, basically they just said that they're working on it and that there's gonna be a lot of improvements. It's only gonna be a single cable plug into the PlayStation 5, so you're not gonna have this weird box thing like they have. Um, that was honestly one of the things that was discouraging me from getting the VR, PlayStation VR, because you had a lot of cables and there was a lot of setup. Um, but one of the biggest improvements, and this is why we're talking about it this week, is that just last week they announced and they showed off the new hand controllers for the PlayStation VR 2. And they look like two pairs of underpants which is fine because it's an improvement on the PlayStation Move controllers that they released back in 2006. At least there's gonna be that improvement on it as well as improvements all around. I'd imagine the resolution can be better. I'd imagine the actual headset itself. Although I've heard it's very comfortable, but I'd imagine the hardware is gonna be a little bit more comfortable and um, just a bit better and easier to use. So fans of VR, you've got a, a new thing coming your way and I can't wait. But first I need the PlayStation 5. Let's talk about GameStop. GameStop has had a very strange year this year so far, um, positively. Uh, their stock price shot up in January, and I'm sure you've seen all the news about that. But they've definitely put a lot of business strategies in place going forward. Obviously, they're innovating the shop. So by the sounds of things, they're changing things up a little bit. According to a transcript of a call between the CEO, George Sherman, and the IOR, Eric Cerny, the company are looking into innovating the shop so that they can introduce some PC hardware. So we're talking about monitors, we're talking about motherboards, we're talking about the whole shebang, including GPUs. And this is probably the biggest benefit to it now. This is a pretty good, especially when you look at what has been happening with the NVIDIA 30 series. We actually have a place where we can walk in and buy a new GPU like the NVIDIA 30 series. So I'm looking forward to seeing what GameStop has next. And that is all the gaming news I have for you this week. Thank you for sticking around and checking it out. I'm going to be in the live chat now and I'm also going to be in the comments afterwards. So please let me know what news item uh, makes you most excited and I will see you next week. Good luck. And there we go. That's Polly's. Uh, I, I keep calling this something different, but it's uh, <laughs> it's Polly's gaming corner. It's Downey's gaming corner. It's the gaming corner with Paul Downey, guys. Uh, so happy to have you back, Paul. Um, it's great. It's just great to have you back, and it's just great to get some updates on the gaming because we want to cover as much as possible with the Mars. Uh, we want to cover all media aspects. Um, and that's what it's all about. So Sheila says she could get back into gaming. Uh, you used to play a few. That's interesting. Tell us what what kind of games were you into? Um, you know, I always I found that gaming has sort of given me a little bit of adrenaline rush. Um, possibly similar to the nerves that I'd get before I hop on stage. Uh, now, similar, not the same, but similar. Um, uh, especially playing first-person shooters and things like that. Um, or there's opportunities to kind of get lost into a different world, um, especially the fact that we're kind of limited to moving around. And uh, it's always nice to see different places. Obviously, we're so used to traveling and things like that. So um, uh, that's why we were playing Valheim, for example, which is quite the exploration game or uh, and building and things like that. So um, it does keep you sane. Yeah, Paul's saying he keep, kept you sane over long. Same with myself, you know, it definitely has. Along with this show, you know, <laughs> definitely one of the big things that kept me sane. And obviously the cool people around me, you know, and, and, and my wonderful team, including all of you guys in there in the chat uh, that have been part of this journey with me. And it's been absolutely amazing. This community is so absolutely awesome, guys. Um, I have to say, it's it's really kept me together. <laughs> so um, I hope you guys are kept together as well by by this platform. And um, yeah, it's just really awesome uh, to have to be able to do this. And you guys are 
are enjoying it. So yeah, <laughs> Doom. Yeah, yeah. What a game. There you go, Sheila. There you go. Yeah, another fantastic game um, as well to check out. But uh, there's many free games, as Paul was saying there. Uh, many, many free games to choose from. And I know Epic Games uh, throw out a free game every week. Um, so that's also really awesome. So um, you should check them out. If you have PC um, or a laptop even, you can even if you don't have much of a system, you know, to use, you can still play like smaller games like Solitaire or Pinball. Uh, no, there's games beyond that as well that work, you know. So um, it's really cool. I'd love to see, I'd love to see a Sheila game. And Sheila, you should get Valheim. You should You should seriously get uh, Valheim. It's a really fun game and it's up to nine players. And we do stream it here. We actually host our own server as well. Uh, well, Brendan hosts it for us. Um, but his computer's just upstairs, so I just flicked that on. Um, so uh, it'd be great to have, uh, we have we have spots available for that one. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to introduce our next act. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's introduce Kind... Um, most of you know kind already, right? We we did um we did a piece on them. Maximilian Foy did a fantastic piece on them um, when they were releasing their tune uh, "Fix of Dopamine," which was absolutely unbelievable. And and that song actually was in the uh, Demar's top twenty for twenty twenty picks. It was it was up there. It was up there in 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 my personal top five of twenty twenty songs. Um, unbelievable track, unbelievable group of musicians. Um, Matt Redmond we've had on the show, uh, absolute gentleman. Uh, and he was recommended by Maximilian Foy as well, I believe. So um, anybody that Maximilian Foy has recommended to this show has been utterly amazing, has been an amazing artist, musician, and just absolutely sound. So big shout out to Maximilian for introducing these guys to me and to our community. Um, so they're a five-piece prog rock band from Dublin who were formed in BIM. Uh, their debut release, Fix a Dopamine, was created as a college project and was featured on our Demaris Top 20 2020. Uh, they released a live studio recording of their track, Piercing Light, recorded in Sun Studios last year. I, I urge you to check it out. It's unbelievable. It's eight minutes of just amazingness. It's a journey. It's a journey. We were talking about getting lost in a journey. Listen to these guys. Listen to these guys. You won't be disappointed. Seriously. They're unbelievable. So uh, today we're going to be playing their upcoming single, Carp Noctum, right? Which nothing, I don't think, I don't even know if anything has been promoted yet on this. So um, I hope I'm not giving away too much information, guys. Let me know. Tell me to shut up and I'll shut up. Um, so uh, that's going to be released with uh, Devoy Records. So no date has been set, but uh, they said to keep an eye on their social uh, medias. And we're going to be joined by um, the full band. Yes, the full band. We're going to be joined by the drummer, Ryan uh, McLelland. Uh, we're going to be joined by the vocalist, Jane Patterson. Uh, on bass, Charlie McCarthy. we got Owen Butterfield on guitar and keys. And Matthew Redmond himself is the band leader who also sings and plays guitar. So um, I think without further ado, let's let's introduce these lovely people uh, to Demar's Live. What do you think, guys? Uh, give them a big uh, warm welcome in the chat. Um, uh as you are very, very kind and welcoming, guys. So do give them a nice welcome as well. Because uh, they will see that in the chat, by the way. And they're in the chat there. There you go. There's kind already. Um, so uh, do give them a nice warm welcome. <laughs> Jesus, I hope that didn't wreck your ears there, guys. <laughs> that was quite loud. I had to turn that up because of Paul Downey's uh, uh, lower video there, so I hope that didn't burst your ears. How's it going, guys? You there? Hello, hello. hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Let me just put you in gallery view. There we are. Did I fit you all in the screen? I think we have a fifth as well, right? He is on the way. Okay, fantastic. Oh, my God, guys. I'm spoiled for choice here with Ollie is here. My God. How are you keeping? <laughs> Great. All good. good. Yeah, so we have uh, we have Owen so far, we've got Ryan, we've got Jane, and we got Matt. Um, it's so nice to see you all. Matt, we already spoke before, so it's such a pleasure to see you again, brother. Um, and it's so nice that you brought all of your uh, fantastic musicians uh, with <laughs> you today. I had such an enjoyment listening to, to some of your music and um, uh, again today, because um, I just can't get enough of yous. Guys, release more music, please. <laughs> My God. Uh, We're desperately uh, trying. So, so how's it going with this? So Matt, I guess I'll just start with yourself. And um, 
uh, how, how's it been going with like getting everybody together as the band leader how, how how has it been through the lockdown it must be it must be tough how, what are your tactics um well i haven't heard the word together in quite a while i mean i don't think we've seen each other since i don't even know like especially ryan living up north you've just been <laughs> a little hermit um away from us so i don't know i haven't seen any of the guys in so long um so it's been tough enough we've been kind of planning some stuff out and promoting and um, digitally i suppose and doing a lot of remote stuff as much as we can we did a little uh remote recording as well that i've just put the final touches on um which uh you'll hopefully see and hear soon but who knows i mean it's a weird time to release music so i'm just trying to hold it together myself and keep the band together and everything so yeah that's that's basically it kind of kind of just uh all doing our own bits and trying to stay in contact and and keep uh, keep the heads above water I suppose. yeah well fair play to you because it is a lot of pressure i mean because you know you're responsible for for keeping everybody together of course and and sort of keeping the motivation keeping the momentum going and it's such a difficult time uh, to be doing that and uh, but it's, thanks so much first of all for sending me on some information about each of your artists or each of the, the musicians in the project it's so amazing to to read up about you all individually uh, you guys all seem to have such a such an awesome background and uh, i checked into some of the projects that you are in as well uh, you seem absolutely super duper talented, uh, which which is not a surprise, obviously, uh, after myself listening to the music that you guys perform with In Kind. Um, but then, of course, uh, other things that um, you perform in outside. So I, I guess I'll start with yourself, uh, Jane. Uh, you perform also in. Um, sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot, by the way. And uh, it's so nice to so nice to meet you. And uh, I have to say, you're an absolutely fantastic vocalist. Um, you're absolutely amazing. Aww. And. Uh, you Thank guys you. have huge support from our community. We all absolutely love you. Uh, but tell, tell us a little bit about um, sort of, because I've heard Matt's story, right? So tell us a little bit about how you sort of came into the band and sort of how he sort of approached it. Tell us a little bit about the backstory there. Um, well, basically we were in BIM together and Matt and I had kind of been doing a lot of um, college kind of exams together so I would do backing vocals he would do guitar we had lots of performance exams and so we kind of knew each other through that and he just asked me if I wanted to sing for his um, one of his exams which was um, which we sang fix of dopamine which is like the first song that we released in and I said yes and it was really fun and then he basically said he wanted to keep it going and obviously Ryan was playing drums on that too and, and uh, yeah I guess it, we just kind of had a good time and yeah. amazing yeah and, and was that a genre that was sort of like were, were you into that kind of genre prior because uh, I know you come from sort of a, a, a vocal ensemble right that's uh, the Theodora burn ensemble right so that's right. it's quite oh, different yeah. uh were you into sort of prog rock uh before or did Matt you sort of introduce you into that genre yeah matt pretty much introduced me into that whatever, genre. whatever I, I wonder if everybody I, will say that is everyone gonna say the same answer but let, but that, that's interesting <laughs> <I've forced> them <laughs> in. i'm not even mad, but like it's great like uh, it's it's such fun and interesting music and i'm really really happy to be obviously opened up to other genres especially as a vocalist it's it's really good to not be just in your own little box and it's great to just do lots of different types of things so yeah awesome awesome happy. and you you play guitar and bass as well um do you uh, okay so <laughs> you're not sure yourself if you, <laughs> but that's uh, uh i definitely i play guitar but maybe not so much bass i bought a bass maybe a year ago or two years ago and i i play it more for fun brilliant no that's oh, yeah. awesome that's great so so you all kind of came together at the same time and and uh, owen uh, so let's move on to yourself uh, what who, who seems who seems the most busiest out of all the members is that correct to say <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, yes. you're, you're, <laughs> you know what? Yes. Your paragraph was the longest, okay, by by Matt. <laughs> so, I, by by, you know, I have to assume then <laughs> that you are the busiest uh, uh, with the projects that you are in. So we've got Charlie in the house. So Charlie, welcome. Let's see if we can fit Charlie into the. Uh, did you guys see the screen, by the way, the um, the studio that you are in here, or do I have to put that up? <laughs> Yes, we can see the, the yellow couch for, you're trying to Fantastic. fit us on. You know, I I should have gotten a bigger couch, guys. You know, I, I, I realized that. Charlie, how are you keeping it? Can you hear us okay? 
Yeah, yeah, what's up? I'm just putting on some headphones because these aren't working. No worries, I was just going to say, yeah, you have them on you. It's sometimes like a pair of glasses, you know, you forget you have them on you. Um, <laughs> but uh, welcome, yeah, take your time, take your time. We're going through everybody here. So, um, so Owen, very interesting uh, projects. You've got um, you've got a couple under your belt. How do you fit in time for, for, for Kind? As, as uh, Matt was alluding, he, he says you, you squeeze Kind in at, at where you can. Um, <laughs> but tell us, how, how are you working with the balance of things and... Um, and especially during these times, I guess. Uh, well, everything's fairly quiet at the moment, obviously. I do I do a lot of home recording stuff anyway, so I, that only takes up a few hours every other mm. day. So to be honest, at the moment, since everything's so quiet, it's very easy to fit everything in because there's nothing happening at so all. So is it the calm before the you storm know? now for you, do you think? Or is it just going to, like, yeah. the, 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 the floodgates will open up and then um, you're going to have to be, do, be a juggling act all of a sudden? How do you reckon? Yeah, no, I do. Rem now, I've kind of completely forgotten this because it's been a whole year. But before lockdown, I was really happy to have a couple of weeks off <laughs> <laughs> when the pandemic first hit because it was looking like some things were going to gonna get squeezed out, mainly college. College was getting well squeezed at that, <laughs> at that point. But uh, yeah, so you, so you sort of wish know. you might have wished this all upon us, perhaps. Yeah, I think you could say it's all my fault. <laughs> well, we have to we have to blame someone, don't we? <laughs> well, that's amazing. So, um, and, and your other projects are they? Are, is this is this really unique? Are all of your projects quite? I didn't get a chance to, to listen to everything, uh, but would they all be quite variable for your own sort of um, personal uh, want to be sort of variable within music? Is that is that sort of? Do you like to branch out to different styles and genres anyway as a musician? Yeah that's yeah that's definitely great so are you yeah. fulfilling all of the criteria do you reckon with all these projects or do you want to slap in one more project there for good measure oh i'm always adding to the pile <laughs> <laughs> we're good there's going to be a point where where something uh, where it collapses where i fall apart or something. <laughs> I don't know. we'll see we'll see what well, happens but for now we're gonna i was gonna going. say i'm sure matt will somehow uh, try to hold you together um <laughs> oh don't worry i'll be here the whole time. <laughs> fantastic no that that's oh, amazing yeah. so these are all bim students is that is that correct to say yeah, fantastic. Yes. And do you think that was easier that you were all together in college? Did you just find that much easier to sort of work together? Um, and uh, maybe I'll just move. I'll ask. I'll ask. I'll just ask Matt there quickly before I move on to the rest of you guys. Um, was that easier or on an organization sort of perspective? I'm sure it was on an obvious level. Was there something that maybe we wouldn't sort of think of? I suppose uh, the fact that you were all in college together. Yeah, I mean, like it. It really does lend itself, and BIM encourages that from day one. It's just like work with everyone. You know. Do, be as in, in as many projects as he can which Owen has taken in his stride of course um, but yeah it was just like especially even there's a there's a rehearsal studio and I think Ryan would literally live there for six hours with his various projects so you know we just pop in and then leave him there to go on to his next thing so there's that kind of community thing where everyone's in the same kind of area and everyone's close by and you know it's great so it's, it's really great and, and valuable to to make bands make connections you know so so yeah i guess that's the awesome thing about bim isn't it they they sort of um they're, they're quite the full package right with what they offer and uh, one of the things that the college doesn't generally um sort of emphasize at all is the networking opportunity and i noticed that in bim they really do emphasize that part and even the teachers themselves are sort of a networking opportunity too because they would have been established musicians of course and um, so you really do have to take it by the uh, by the horns really and just kind of dig in and, and sort of utilize all that so um, I think it's a fantastic thing so speaking about Ryan let's throw Ryan in anyway you can unmute yourself there Ryan uh, the absolutely awesome drummer and I'm a drummer myself man and I cannot help but appreciate uh, the drumming and the time signatures and the feel and the grooves that you uh, you implement into into the songs of kind and um, that must be an absolutely wonderful experience or an absolute headache to learn all of that stuff and perhaps that's for everybody but how, how are you fitting in practice practice during this time now uh, as a drummer are you able to play your drums yeah so i'm actually extremely fortunate in that when i was living in dublin i didn't really have any space for my drums so my sort of fix for getting practice was just join as many bands as possible because in my head <laughs> that meant more time behind the drums but now i am incredibly buzzing to actually have my oh drums wow wow because in dublin i was renting in a space where i couldn't keep them um I eventually, like, just before the pandemic, I found a rehearsal space to keep my drums, and I was buzzing about that, and then, of course, global pandemic hits. Can't do that mm. anymore. So, yeah, I just, I moved home to Antrim. I have my drums here. 
I've been getting really into recording drums and I'm practicing a lot, probably more than I should. I'm not really doing any college work, which is kind of bad, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's been good. And the kind stuff, just as you say, learning it, like it's a fun challenge um, because I've always been into prog as well as Matt's. Mm. That's, we sort of, before the band started, like me and Matt had just been jamming kind of casually and we always talked about different bands and stuff we liked and you know I've always enjoyed writing those kind of parts so it was fun to finally have a band where those ideas could fit because before kind I was never really in a prog project if you will so I felt like I was practicing a lot of cool prog stuff and I didn't have an outlet for it yeah so it's nice to have that and Matthew's great as well because he sort of just he'll send us a demo and he'll be like okay I've put some drums in here but you can just ignore them if you want like do whatever you want <laughs> so it's, ni- it's nice to have that freedom so, so do you ignore the drums or do you just go actually just kind of like ah yeah I'll probably just play along to these or uh, wh- wh- how, how much do you use from, from the guidance I guess it's, it's it probably differs does it depending on the song because your own inspiration can come into play right too as in your own mind starts to create things absolutely absolutely like for example with Fix It Dopamine he didn't put a demo together um, well, no, I think he had shown me the riff but there were no demo drums because I remember coming in Matt was expecting me to play a shuffle and I played a beat that was like completely not what he was expecting <laughs> and I think I sort of like fried his head a wee bit but um, I, I was think, not think, happy <laughs> at all from that point on from that point on that's why he started making oh really <laughs> <laughs> so, so I wouldn't surprise him by playing the completely wrong it's right always beat. the drummer that has that to was, make it was, difficult isn't it now what are you messing yeah <laughs> that, was, that was so funny because like I had had like when when I, I hear a song, this was before I recorded anything, it was literally just a phone recording. So like I walked into the rehearsal studio and I was like, Grand, rock up here and I know exactly what's going on in my head. And then Ryan just like plays something completely different. And I know I was rage and I was like Listen, Jane, I do, do, you, do you like that? Because I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of it. And now it is literally like one of my favorite drum beats ever. Like it is just it's I, I I always say me and Ryan have two brains when when it comes to music. Sometimes it's just like there's some weird barrier between us, but it, it works out. I I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's interesting. I mean, it's uh, especially like with, with a rhythmic thing. So Ryan's providing obviously a rhythmic uh, part to sort of something that you already have in your head that you created. Obviously, your own rhythmic part. So uh, you're kind of almost there's like a polyrhythm going on, right? So there's like something going on in Ryan's head, and then something which is amazing for the diversity, right? And it also pulls you out of your own comfort zone as well, Matt. I'm sure, as well as I'm sure you pull Ryan out of of um, of his comfort zone at times, perhaps in certain ways. I'm, I'm, I'm and I'm sure that you could say that for all the musicians. Uh, because obviously the songs are so so intricate and there's so many changes and also even like the time signature sort of feels like it changes sometimes I know you kind of move into sort of a, a swing at times it can feel like a six it, it, it is a four is it a four is it a six it's hard to almost tell it sometimes uh, which is re- which which, <laughs> which is just amazing you know it's just amazing to, to, to kind of analyze it um, so it just goes to show I guess sort of the skills that, that you're sort of working with here the skill set amongst you all uh, which I really do commend you for I think it's absolutely fantastic um, so last and definitely not least let's bring Charlie into the house Charlie what's the story how are you keeping going on what's up uh, not much I'm just you know what? I'm just absolutely uh, flabbergasted uh, by all of you wonderful talented people here um, and I'm just really happy to have all of you uh, because I get to sort of delve into you a little bit um, I'm not a super fan I swear right I'm trying to ho- I'm holding myself back here uh, but uh, all the guys in the chat as well are giving you love we got Amy Allen in the house saying yay love you Jane <laughs> and uh, all of the guys giving you some absolute um awesome support there but charlie tell us a little bit about yourself as well so you're playing bass of course uh, you also play in a band uh, called uh, nerves i believe right so it's a post-punk uh, noise band i believe is, is how matt uh, described it and um uh, yeah. which is re- really interesting because it's very different um, i suppose in a way or is it tell me about like let's say the differentiation and and sort of are you getting your fulfillment out of both of these projects in different ways I think like it's interesting because I like a lot of the time I started playing in bands when I was like 16, 17, like I was playing a lot of punk stuff, but I was always pushing it towards prog. And now I kind of finally have two different projects where like I'm not trying to make like a noise punk band playing seven, eight. Like <laughs> I don't have to do that. Oh, what what, like. what did they say when you when you asked them to do that? Where they just did, 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 did they let you? Shock and horror, like <laughs> trying to make a drummer who could only play in four, four, like 
losing what I thought is just <laughs> not gonna happen. Like. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd I'd absolutely say so. But the the tunes are great. I had to listen to um oh I can't remember which one it was now. Feck's sake, um I had it written down and everything. I don't know where I put it. Um, uh, but it was a, there was a video to it as well, if I'm not mistaken. I think that could be. Yeah, faces. that was that it. It was faces. Our, it had a red. It had a red sort of scene in it and stuff like that. Really yeah, well made. It's very different now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Very oh, is it? Now. It's very different to that one. Oh, very good. Okay, okay. What What are you yeah, guys yeah. sounding like now? What sort of the style is I going for? Kind of like girl band mixed with like, and so I watch you from afar, sort of. Fantastic. Like changing up quite a great, bit. Great, like. great, awesome, awesome. And so, as uh, I could see, like from, um, I was watching uh, this morning. I saw the video again to your son studios. Um, recording of uh piercing light and i just saw you getting into that charlie just like you know your eyes were closed you're you were you were totally in like that is that sort of yourself is that like a t- almost a different part of you um like you go more inward with kind and then with with uh nerves you're sort of more sort of throwing stuff out more is that kind of how you feel that is there a certain i think yeah that's on the money because it's like with kind i definitely have to lock in in a very different mm. way um, cause it's much more of a supportive role and a lot less melodic. Um, like it's definitely just like providing a harmonic base to everything that's going on. So it's like, my aim is to like lock in with Ryan. I mean, there's so many from when we were actually able to do gigs. Like I just remember like completely zoned in and feeling like I was attached to the kick drum. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's funny. Like I should add that in that video, there is an element of like real individual focus. But part of that is because the drums were in a different room. Like at a lot of the shows, myself and Charlie would literally just be like vibing the whole time. We're just in the back of the stage, yeah. just like <laughs> staring at each other. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like far too much eye contact. Like we did. I don't know if it's threatening or romantic. I think it's somewhere in between. Like. <laughs> I think it sounds beautiful. Um, yeah, it's a- I'm also a great matchmaker as well as bandmaker. I knew it. I knew there was something in there. No, it's fantastic. And and Pearson Light, I mean, eight minutes, you know. And um, is it was it is it too rude of me to ask? I mean, how many takes? Or was it one take? I mean, because you you play it all together. It was obviously all together, right? Or was it multi tracked and the video was was shown um, like it was together? It was together. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. It was, it was all like in the one take. I d- I don't know how many we did on the day. Um, but yeah, yeah, well, it was like kind of all as live as we could get it, you know, with with, draw, with uh, Ryan in a in a different room. <laughs> but um, and, yeah. and I didn't see a, a lick of sheet music or anything around you. I mean, how how on earth, like how how much practice does one need to sort of get that tight to be able to play an eight minute song, which 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 with with quite a complexity, I, w- I would say, like um, and to be able to dedicate a full day, I suppose, to trying to get it down in one take. I would say like. This sort of links into the point we were talking about with BIM, because all of us being music students, like it's very much in our day to day to just have to learn music on a quick turnaround. Mm. Um, like we had heard Piercing Light before, but the there's going to be another s- tune dropping from that session at some point. And if I recall correctly, none of us had played Carp Knocked them together before. <laughs> but we met up, rehearsed it, and then the following day went and recorded it wow and at the time, and like that felt really high pressure but looking back on it like that was probably the most efficient way to do it because if you rehearse something loads and loads you nearly lose that like excitement to get in and play it live do you know what i mean so we just listened to, well in my case anyway i just listened to the demos matthew sent a lot made my own notes and i think the rest of the guys would agree that in college you just get so used to doing that kind of mm. thing for your assessments for different projects that it just um it just becomes the most efficient way to do things and i think it allows for more energy when you actually go to get the take i don't know what you guys think but that's yeah, no, definitely how i, I sure. talk about it anyway i always remember like walking to rehearsal street because like, unit one that one that's closest to bim it's like a 15 minute walk away so it's always like i always remember like walking there just listening to whatever songs i was rehearsing that day because that's i think a big part of like getting like something like an eight minute tune because it's a lot of song mm-hmm. Uh, it's just like a big part of it is just internalizing it and then you know it's great when you do that as well because you really um embody the music a lot more rather than reading it or something like that where you're like 
you can't focus on what the music is like trying to say i suppose but that sounded too pretentious like. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and owen you have some really uh awesome uh riffs in that song as well i have to say and, and some of the techniques you're using as well the combination of uh with the sort of finger picking uh with the strumming is is, is just ex- excellent it, it, it adds such a nice uh vibe was that um yourself or or was it a collaborative sort of effort with regard to that i'm pretty sure that one matthew literally sent me a tab and i think <laughs> his was in a funny tuning and i went nah so mine's a normal tuning but it's the exact same thing that he played so no that's a that's a matthew thing it's a lot of the time what happens with the demos is matthew sends the demo yeah. and says ah do something like that whatever you think and that is, was it was it any any of the case <laughs> that like you know matt matt would said something and it's it's quite complex and you'd have to learn a sort of new technique completely um no that one was probably the hardest one so far but that's not too bad. I got I, I was into that tappy stuff many many moves Brilliant. ago. <laughs> there is nothing I can throw at Owen that that he won't <laughs> just like do do it and then do it better than I could ever dream uh-huh. of. So it's it's all it's all tied up nicely. It's all great. Yeah, I, I was I was just perplexed uh, at that moment, you know, and and I was like, wow, that's such a such a fine musical moment there you know and i'm glad it was visually <laughs> captured too because the visual uh, sort of movement of your hand as well it really adds an effect to sort of what we're listening to and it adds an appreciation i suppose to it you know to people that wouldn't be as let's say advanced uh, at guitar playing you know and even those that are advanced would i'm sure would appreciate it you know what i mean in that kind of way so um uh it's funny when you're playing that riff owen because you look like you're barely breaking yeah it's like, so e- it looks so <laughs> easy <laughs> You're thinking like, what are you going to make? <laughs> <laughs> so effortless, like it's just getting... But, yeah, uh, but to, to be honest, you all look uh, quite in your zone, though, you know? And um, I mean, I, I just, guys, I know this is so sad to say i just really want would love to see his live you know what i mean and that that goes to say obviously for so many uh musicians uh but seeing like live studio recordings i know it's a different vibe and if you're in a studio it's more controlled um but seeing you guys just the way you sort of respond to the music and 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 there's almost that sense of i know you're in a studio so there is probably pressure within or i don't know how you guys feel inside obviously um but there's almost you could feel like the respect in the room do you know what I mean? Amongst you all for the song. So I don't know if that's an internal feeling, but um, I definitely felt that, you know, that you are very professional and you respect the songwriting. You you respect the process of recording. And, I, and perhaps that's a lot of stuff for, you know, going into BIM as well. They sort of do sort of show the sort of how, how, how respectful one has to be towards music as well. And I'm sure that's obviously ingrained into use. Um, but it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing another recording. So you guys have, um, you, you alluded to, is, is it um carp uh carpe nocturne is it that that's that's coming out is that coming out as a sun uh studios release as well from my understanding or is that yes Brilliant. so it's 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 another live video um and there may or may not be a third live video but we won't say too much about that right now but um yeah there's uh lots of stuff going on i mean it's it, as 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 the similar with you like we're dying to gig you know we just can't wait to to get back out and and start playing again but you know it's just patience until then i guess yeah yeah absolutely i mean um well you've already said so much you're giving us so much exclusives uh today <laughs> matt so I, I really do appreciate it and um, so we're gonna get an exclusive um for uh uh carp uh noctum noctum isn't it with an m at the end am i pronouncing yes. that right um yes. I'm, I'm absolute I'm... nonsense uh <laughs> titles of songs is there, an, is there an m at the end of that yes Fuck <laughs> <laughs> oh well there you go you, you, you gotta write a harder drum beat then for ryan next time as punishment isn't it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's it you gotta watch oh and you have to watch out as well saying oh that's too easy that's uh, that's fine because matt's just gonna oh, raise that level he's gonna raise that bar <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Oh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Jane, tell us a little bit about um, as well. You were doing some projects as well over the lockdown. Uh, just to bring you back in, um, with regard to you were doing some videos with um, with your project, wasn't it? It was like a collective video collage, of sort of like um, uh, your choir involved with with sort of different projects. It looked absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, basically, I just well, Theodore Byrne, who's a lovely. Um, very talented keyboard player and works with a lot of great Irish artists. She basically, she does this, um, it's called the Theodora Byrne Ensemble. So she gets lots of vocalists in and she works with Irish artists and they 
it's basically this big choir collab. So like, we, the artist will like record an acoustic version of the song, and will she'll arrange like a lovely um, thing around it. So I've been doing that, just kind of also recording bits and bobs here and there for other people. Um, and yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I've seen, um, guys, I don't know what's wrong with my memory. I think it's just because there's so much info. I'm dealing with five people here. That's what it is, guys. It has to be I'm dealing with five people. So I'm like uh, trying to find the information. I'm like, wait a sec, wait a Because I did see one of those videos I thought was absolutely fantastic. It was Saint Sister uh, Corpses, mm. and it was absolutely uh, wonderful. But you just do a couple of them as well, which is really nice. And I have to say, you know, it's wonderful bringing out content during stuff like this, isn't it, guys? I mean, for, for, for yourselves being involved with it, you know, to be able to express yourselves and and work with the technology that we have you know and and, and that was beautifully edited jane like they, they did a great job of presenting it on screen and stuff and just the fact as well that you were able to do some sun recording studios and that was before lockdown right obviously um my god what what month would you have recorded that in sun studios it would have been 2020 right early 2020 it was right before February. Yeah, isn't that crazy like the fact that you've managed to get that in before the fucking world closes down i mean and you <laughs> yeah. have stuff to release now because of that like that is unreal did you realize that guys do you realize what you what just happened come on <laughs> say something <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i was i was glad of that i mean it's um it's it's a weird thing you know i think we all feel that it's 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 hard to motivate ourselves to um perform for you know what essentially is instagram now or youtube it, it's and i'm sure you find it yourself um it's it's hard to keep creating and stuff but like I, I i know i really appreciate watching all the videos ryan is doing on his instagram all the videos jane is doing and charlie and owen and, and everything but um yeah i mean it's i i i kind of decided not decided but I, i'd say like made a conscious decision to um to release it because you know you can't wait forever and it's something for the people who support you you know you can't hold the, the music um you know away from people to to hide it away until you can make money off it and gig you know i, I think it's it's to give something back as well you know people are stuck at home so spread a bit of uh, positivity and whatnot yeah absolutely and um i mean what was your plan to sort of um like back in february i suppose like was your plan to sort of get a series of gigs going or were you still going to keep working in the studio sort of uh head down and and, and make, writing more songs before you got to that gigging stage or was that still further down the line we um, we had yeah. a headline gig booked for april i believe um we were hoping that we'd be able to do like an anniversary version of that this year but gigs still aren't back so <laughs> still waiting for that april 2020 headline folks <laughs> where was it meant to be uh, Wheelands upstairs, I think. Awesome. Guys, like, when things open up, just give me a shout straight away. Like, I, I want to get you as a gig. I, can I just book your next gig? Can I just, can you just prioritize me? Like, and just, it's all about me, guys, right? Um, absolutely. But I'd love to book your first gig. Like, I think it'd be absolutely amazing. Seriously. Um, and I promise, I promise I promote it. I'll promote it, guys. I'll make it good. I'll give you all the money. I don't care about the money. I just want the free ticket. And the backstage passes, of course, you know. <laughs> absolutely man absolutely i mean i think we're just never gonna leave the stage once we get back on there cause i think we all took it for granted but um yeah yeah definitely your name is top of the guest list fantastic that's all i needed to hear and we have the recorded proof guys by the way and uh, this video is going <laughs> to stay up there so um and we have witnesses as well watching the stream so um you're not going to get out of this one matt now okay um so tell us how, how many songs before before we play we, we we crack into your upcoming song um tell how, how many songs do you have sort of in the in the pipeline or can we can we speak about them or you want to keep stuff mysterious and that's absolutely fair um i mean we have lots of bits going on like we recorded another song the same time as we recorded um fix a dopamine so we did the drums for two songs that day and i've been working on that like a mad thing recently um but again it's just trying to get people together and rehearse and stuff and I, I i've just been struggling to be motivated to write songs as well so i'm just kind of playing up a year biding my time i guess um we probably have oh let's see two maybe three may like a, 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 i'd say three or four songs kind of 
in the in the making in the making so like and you know once things start looking a bit more normal i'm i'm hoping that it'll just kind of push things out and really get the band going like we'll we'll get we'll get merch and we'll get gigs and we'll get eps albums whatever we'll we'll just continue and hopefully just grow from there but until then I'm, it's just kind of we're all kind of i think just waiting yeah you well know? it's great you are still you aren't entirely waiting because you're still doing your own stuff individually guys right and you're also releasing stuff as well like you you've got youtube videos up um your most recent video i think you only released your your recent one from sun um there was just what the first of march or something so you're still you're still with the yeah. times piercing light is the name of that one so guys do check that out by the way it's kind kind band or kind the band uh, if people are finding you Oh, it's it's you know what? It's a bad band name. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> if you look up on YouTube, uh, kind band, you'll find it. Kind band uh, on Spotify. Just look up kind. Fix a dopamine. Um, and we're on Instagram as kind band. Amazing. Too, so yeah. Well, don't worry. It's okay. You know, people do pick sort of names that are similar to you know usual daily words. I mean, all the time. It's okay, <laughs> and, and it, it works. Um, but luckily, actually, we have premeditated this issue, and we have supplied a link in the description, of course, guys. So for you guys watching at home, uh, kinds uh, information there. Now, unfortunately, I've limited it to Facebook because I'm a bleeding dope. I should have uh, thought of you guys that are on Instagram as well. So um, if you are struggling with that, please do message me personally and i will send you all of the links um to to kind and uh, make sure i i, I kind of spread that out and diversify the social networks uh, we were speaking about not everybody's on facebook and stuff but also to follow you guys individually i think is really cool as well so i'd love to receive your links guys at some stage maybe matt you could forward on uh, the link to to owen's projects ryan's jane's and, and charlie's uh, individual projects as well i think it would be awesome uh, to sort of put that up and do this video so people can check out all the awesome stuff uh, except for owen's i mean we'll have to get a link tree or something for all of his projects because there's just too many just too many he's going to take up the whole this i'm going to run out of letters um but these are all doing so many amazing things as well outside of it so I, I would love to delve in a little bit deeper into into all of your projects individually and i'm looking forward to to chatting to you again guys so before i let you go right before i let you go i'm going to close off with a little cheesy finish right um which is going to be a question to each of you individually and i guess i'll start off with uh, charlie uh, because you're you're down at the bottom for myself and i started with you last last time so i want to start with you first and i want to ask you and you have to be totally honest here okay you can't be just you know looking at your band leader and going like what would he pick whatever <laughs> it's about you not your friends not your family not the chat not me right it's really important you answer this right because it's recorded as well no pressure at all right but you have to be completely honest honest and i'm putting you on the spot here so when the whole feckin world opens up right and everything goes back to bleeding normal please god right you can only pick one of these three things and you have to pick one right you can't say phone a friend or ask the audience right what do you do do you play a gig do you see a gig like go to a gig or go on a holiday right so all of you guys have an advantage because you've already heard the question you can think of this so it's not really fair i should have muted it myself everybody but charlie you go first you got honors nah it's definitely gonna be playing a gig that's not even hard okay <laughs> okay cool so yeah yeah that's just, i it's that shared energy in the room that i like i really miss i'm sure everybody probably does but it's like that kind of feeling when you're up on a stage as well and you're playing live music and like you have that back and forth in the crowd it's just yeah it's the best. I miss it awesome. so much, as I'm sure. Where, where, things. where would be your ideal next gig then? Where, where would you visualize your first gig to be? It doesn't have to be a place you played. It could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the country. No, actually, no, no. It can't be the next because that's like a holiday. Then, no, 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 no. It has to be in this country. All right. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, just Glastonbury. Like you know, it's easy can't to get count to, that. I can't, sorry, play, I like, cannot you know? count that. One. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, Glastonbury. Okay, I'll let you go with that one. Okay, so Jane, <laughs> Jane, you tell us what's what. What do you think? By the way, don't don't pick the. You don't have to pick the same. There's no wrong answer. Musicians have picked all of the answers hey, under this. You can't pick. No, he cheated there at the end. I'm not allowing that one. Right? That's. I'm giving you <laughs> half a point for that one, Charlie. Okay. Uh, so Jane, tell us tell us your honest truth there. Okay, cross your heart, hope to die, uh, and all the rest. I'm actually struggling with this. I'm not gonna lie because I have family abroad that I want to go see, but. <laughs> 
You're oh. out of the bag. There's no wrong answer, by the way. There's no wrong answer. No one's gonna hold it against you, guys. You can't hold it against a person, okay? There's no, there's no begrudging. Yeah, actually, I remember Amy Ellen on on this show saying that she was dying to go for a holiday, <laughs> and I laughed so much. I just didn't expect it. Um, so oh you gosh, laughed then, okay. and then yeah, you see karma comes around, and <laughs> yeah. See, now I'm in this position. Okay, I'm gonna say, oh geez, okay, I'm I'm gonna say. Go for a holiday. Brilliant. Okay, so where would you go? <laughs> I would go to France to see my family. Fantastic. Which part of France are they from? Nice. nice. Brilliant. Absolutely amazing. I mean, the weather's lovely there, right? And um, it's it's yeah. fantastic. What do you like most about Nice besides the fact your family are there? Oh my gosh, it's just the best place ever. Like you have the mountains and like forests and the ocean, and they have a pool. And I love like climbing, like mountaineering. So uh, it's just the best awesome. place Awesome. Sounds beautiful. I love mountains myself, so I totally dig it. Absolutely awesome. So, Ryan, tell us, what's your story? Tell us, which one would you go for? Oh, uh, man. They're all very appealing. <laughs> that's why they're so hard. You know, that's why it's a tough one. Yeah. Haven't thought about it. I might have to go for the holiday, and here's why. Um, I feel like whenever things go back to normal hopefully where there's not going to be another pandemic in our lifetime that'll be real bad luck if that <laughs> happened but uh, um assuming that doesn't happen like i will hopefully always have the option to see a gig and hopefully always have the option to play a gig but i don't know if i'll always have the option to go on a holiday if been like down the line maybe i have kids or other commitments or whatever so i think like coming out of it like because me and charlie are in our final year of college now as well so it'll be the first time where it's like, oh, I'm not anchored by college. I have projects and that I obviously want to maintain, but I don't have like an academic schedule as it were. So I don't know, man, I'm, especially because I've been living at home. Like I don't have like a lot of my friends. I'm in the village where I grew mm. up. A lot of my friends have moved away from here. So like I'm not really spending a lot of time with friends doing cool things at the minute. Um, I'm spending a lot of time at the drums, which is nice, but I definitely miss the crack. Too. Yeah. So. I'd love to just so holiday. holiday that's okay. It. I mean, you didn't ha you didn't have to explain yourself too much. That I know, I know you felt like you had to, because like I was like, oh, I'm saying the wrong answer. It's like, all right, but guys, before I say it, like it's just like all this stuff, and um, I, I I bought some of it, right? I'm buying half of what you said there, but um, that's okay. That's okay, Ryan. Absolutely. Where would you go? Where would you go? Where's your place? <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys i'm so sorry i'm doing this to you like i'm, I'm actually like having an, the absolute crack here i hope you are enjoying okay. it uh, <laughs> Matthew, Matthew, okay. look it can't be a, it can't be a normal interview right? we have to wind things up wind just up a little bit so sorry ryan go on go on tell us no just before i do matthew will testify that i always like talk far far more than i need to as i'm doing no right. but that's so do i no i <laughs> dude great own it do it i love it that's what we need that in interviews um, you, you this is where content comes from it's brilliant and you're you're the voice of reason I heard as well in the group, so that's that's how Matt, that's how Matt described you, isn't it, Matt? <laughs> Ryan will literally make me question my entire life within the space of like five minutes of talking. He's just like, "What do you want to do with your life, man? What's what's going on? Like, where do you, like do you even like know what you're doing?" I'm just like Ryan. I don't have the answers. Listen, I don't, just go on your holiday and leave me alone. <laughs> well, there you go. It's all out. It's all out in the open, now, guys. It's all out in the open. <laughs> this is turning into therapy, almost, isn't it? We're we're, we're kind of moving down that uh, that way, but no, no, we're okay. We'll, we'll we'll pull back. We'll pull back. So so Ryan, did you did you pick a place? Tell us what you think. Yes. So I'd love to go to Central America, sort of like Guatemala, Nicaragua, kind of awesome. region. That was what I was hoping to do this summer, but obviously it's not looking like that's going to. Why why would you why 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 would you go uh, in that in that area? What draws you uh, to that place? I just like so my old roommate in Dublin was from Mexico and like he has a lot of friends in that sort of part of the world and I met a lot of them who when they, they they occasionally came over to Dublin to visit him and they were all just really really nice and just from being around him and his friends like they sort of told me a bit more about where they're from showed me photos and videos and I just started taking notions I thought this looks lovely and it just it's i don't know it just seemed a bit different yeah. like i've never been anywhere near that part of the world and i just feel like it'd be 
something fun and completely I love different. it. I love it. I really hope yeah. you, you get to go there as one of your first places um, after the lockdown, man. And uh, you couldn't have picked a warmer place to go, really. Uh, like, you're pretty much, bam, on the equator, almost. I think you're just about at the equator, actually, even. Aren't you? <laughs> Central yeah, America, yeah. pretty much, right? So um, you're guaranteed a summer, at least, you know? Or Yeah. Yeah. And maybe being a bit naive thinking i can hack that heat like i start to get nervous whenever it gets to 15 degrees here like so <laughs> see how that fares yeah <laughs> get the factor 50 out that, it might sleep. be it might be a little bit rough yes yeah. so you, you should probably book yourself a bit of a longer stay so you can adapt you know i think it might take a, a little bit of time to to climatize that's what i've heard you know to, to sort of the weather yeah. i'll get a training camp in i'll be prepared i'll be in that sauna now you're talking <laughs> now you're talking all right owen so <laughs> owen's after all that now owen's owen and matt have had so much time to think of what they're gonna say uh which now don't be sorry stop no don't be sorry it was perfect i'm still gonna goof everyone it still goofs it everyone still goofs it in the end all right so owen tell us tell us what your uh, your um your decision has been uh all those things are gonna happen that's okay point. that's not an answer so though think, uh, that's so you can't yeah, use that you can't what did I... <laughs> the answer is right the answer is i want to go to okay deadly that, i love it i love it which uh which gig would you go to what's what's your go-to gig to be honest I'd, I'd be really happy with a small one just a big piss up and wheel and nice that's, that's all we need nice that's all would you go need. would you go to like a, a variety <laughs> gig like a couple of different bands a couple of different independent local bands that kind of style yeah, yeah? Doesn't matter who's on stage, really just just big piss up and wheelings. That's all I'm. That's all I'm. Dude, for. That see, is the thing is, to be a sardine in the smoking area. Oh, like. the good old days, guys. <laughs> the good old days. Owen's cheating here because if he goes to a selection of bands, he's definitely going to be in one. So he's going to be no, watching a gig that. and playing a gig. Want. That's a good point. <laughs> I don't want that first. That's a good point. We'll let him away with this one. All right, we'll let him away with this one. Um, so Matt, tell us what's uh, what's your thing? Are you going to mess this up now? Are you? Oh God, this is like, this is why I wanted to bring them all on. So I had like the least. I'm not going to let you away with this. No way. Like... <laughs> you know what I'm like. I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I changed my answer after Ryan's <laughs> fucking, uh, speech on on his answer. He, 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 I feel like he got the question before the show or something. <laughs> We're actually in cahoots. Dr- us drummers, you know, we stay together, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, he's convinced me once again to look at myself and what I'm doing doing um so i think i'd actually probably go on a holiday because uh, as owen said as well th- there'll be time to do uh, th- there'll be time to play a gig I-, I think to escape you know this whole mindset and everything for a week and just like do like be in a normal life in a you know away from everything would be um would be nice so yeah i'd say uh maybe go on a holiday which i wasn't expecting after Char- charlie had a great answer and i was like he's bang on the money me and charlie are playing a gig together if, if anything but i don't know yeah i'd say just escape somewhere i don't know bray or something i don't know that's still in the country no you can't pick bray tell us where would you go which which point? guys these aren't following the rules here what's going on i'm going crazy here we'll never get out of here We're, it's been 45 minutes these these interviews are supposed to be 30 Right, my producers, well, I'm the producer. I'm talking to myself in my head saying, hurry up, hurry up. No, I'm not, I'm loving this. I don't want this to end. Of course I don't. Uh, where would you go? Where, what, what's kind of a, what's flickering in your head there? What's what's kind of popping up? Is there a country? Is there a place that's not Bray? I don't even know. I, I, well, okay, it see, can be Bray, girl, fine. Bray, like during the, during the first lockdown, and it was, or not the, like in the summer, and it was just great. Like we just had, like we thought it was some utopia because it was like, oh my God, we've escaped lockdown. This is amazing. <laughs> so it was, yeah, we definitely built it up. But um, yeah, I don't know. Bray is grand. Look, like, it's, like it's, like it's inaccessible. <laughs> there are borders technically to it now, right? If you're outside the five kilom limit, so... <laughs> Jane is like just She should so be much here. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan's Jane. Dead, no like. guys. It's he cheated. Oh he, does he God. do this all the time? Does he does he cut corners with the music? He doesn't. It doesn't sound like he does. But um <laughs> and, and Charlie, you're sticking to your answer, you're not changing anything, no? I know that it oh, for God's day. sake, guys! <laughs> yeah, Bray sounded pretty, pretty good now, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Might hop on the inflatable kayak and go out to Bray for the kayak. Can you rent kayaks in Bray? That sounds awesome all of a sudden now as well. Yeah, you can do anything in Bray. Bray. Yeah. Bray is the land of dreams. Guys, you can make it there, you'll make it right, there. Guys, I'll get, I'll get here, it's, it's done. I'll get you a gig in Bray. Like, that's, that's what we'll do. I'll get you a gig in Bray. There's the Purdy Kitchen. The Purdy oh. Kitchen's in Bray, isn't it? Yeah. That's in there. Yeah. 
Oh, what's up, Don Leary? Of, like being offered the chance yeah. to go anywhere. Offered the chance to go anywhere, and you're like, yes. You know what? Because I, I I went to Bray a lot over the the first lockdown. You know, I think wasn't it or when it wasn't that bad or what? It was this. It was before or whatever yeah. before they brought in the restrictions. And we went to Bray, went to Hoth, we went to all the kind of like it felt holiday. You know, like in April, I think it was. You know, it kind of felt it was. We had a nice year. You know, we had a nice summer. I mean, we had a terrible year. We had a really nice kind of start to the summer, and then it went kind of shite or whatever. And and then that fucking winter, which was horrendous. But anyway, guys, geez, I could chat you for ages. These are absolutely awesome. I, I'm. <laughs> glad we got to ice break that a little bit as well we probably should start with that jesus now we're all loosened up wasn't it go out for a couple of pints after this or whatever um but listen it's been an absolute pleasure guys um so genuinely genuinely saying so like because i've been i've been following you uh i've been following your music and now i'd love to you know check you out individually as well as as, as i know you are super talented i'd love to see uh all of your other projects as well and I, I do advise all of you guys tommy cullen says the harbor bar there we go bray savage amy allen's laughing bray brilliant and uh, maximilian voice says great interview folks y'all have one of the most exciting sounds in the country today for an old fecker like me he said fucker okay i can say fucker right i think I, it's my stream they're not going to monetize me. i don't have any money yet. whatever uh like me who's still clinging to <laughs> topographical oceans it's great to have some new great prog i absolutely agree with you max yeah it's so nice um not many prog bands uh, that i'm familiar with in sort of the independent irish music scene guys so um if you do find any please throw them my way it's definitely a genre that i am and i, I didn't even mention this to you guys that's close to my heart uh because i i'm absolutely in love with uh with like late 60s 70s prog uh one of my favorite bands being camel which a band that not many people actually know of uh but it's an absolutely amazing uh, uh band and, and and i've just was absolutely fell in love with Prague once I first heard them and uh, I'm, I'm absolutely falling in love with you guys I think these are absolutely amazing so and not in a weird way but just like in your music like you know uh, but these are also very sound so I, I really like these for that as well so listen um, is there anything you want to close off with Matt before we stay here absolutely forever because I can't seem to close off this show for some reason I don't know what you did to me all I can think about is Bray <laughs> fuck <laughs> What's wrong with me, guys? Matt, tell us, tell us what's going on. We're going to play, uh, tell us about your upcoming, sh the, the tune we're going to play now exclusively, uh, Carpe Noctum, and, um, and and just close off with something, please, because I can't close this off. I don't know what's going on. Okay. You're in charge. Um, we are, uh, I, I'm panicking at this moment, <laughs> but um, please do check out all of the band members. Um, They're all extremely talented, lovely humans, and I'm very grateful to have them in a band. Uh, and to get to be friends with them as well so um thank you kozak for having us on the show and uh, yeah big shout out to maximilian foy as well for for putting us all in contact um absolutely yeah so um check out our spotify check out our facebook check out our uh, instagram we'll have lots of bits going on and um yeah have a good night folks see you later guys have a great night it's been a pleasure carpe noctum by kind chat to you soon guys take care
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, your exclusive from kind. You have not heard that anywhere else, guys. Oh, it's starting again. Let's not spoil it. Let's not overdo it. But guys, do stay tuned. Um, do stay tuned to Kind. Uh, kind is the band. And uh, you can see that there on the... Uh, I hope you've caught that now. But no, you don't have to. It's okay. I have it in the description of the video. Go check them out, guys. Hit that like button for Kind. Please, please do. Um, wait, I mean, I don't have to say please. Like, it, it's common sense. You heard what they're like. They're absolutely amazing. You've seen them. Um, you've, you've heard... You've gotten into the insights into them. You heard what they wanted to do after lockdown. Mainly, Bray and... Um, Look, go go check them out, guys. Seriously. Uh, Carpe Noctum, that was your exclusive. Um, and you won't hear that again. I promise you. You won't hear that again um, until it gets officially released. So um, that's what I was meaning when I said that. Uh, so absolutely wonderful. I have the guys there. The guys in the chat as well. All our bits there, guys. And gals, thanks for tuning in. Absolute pleasure to have you. Tommy Cullen with This Is Beautiful. Maximilian Foy. Oomph Matty channeling, cha channeling Peter Gabriel there. Um, and Charlie McCarthy with a cheers, gang. Absolutely Absolute pleasure chatting to you, Charlie. And um, yeah, Maximilian Foy, the introducer, the great introducer, the glue, the bridge between um, uh, myself and Kind. Uh, so nice, uh, Max. I, I, I am indebted uh, to you for introducing me to such a fantastic band. Amy Allen, Yen, Fairness, Harbour Bars, pretty class. <laughs> Absolutely. Guys, there we go. We have our venue. We have our venue. Let me get chatting to the to the people in charge there. Hopefully the venue, please God, is still, is still running smoothly. Um, after this, I mean, of course. Um, what else we got? Sorry, I'll turn that down a little bit. Um, ba 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 ba. Great interview. We've seen that. Ashley Mobasa, great venue. Saw Bitch Falcon. They're awesome. Great stuff. Great stuff. Guys, hold on. Don't you go anywhere. Don't you go anywhere. Uh, we're going to bring back. Um, we're going to play some kind tunes to launch us into our next section. Uh, I'm going to play. Um, Fix the dopamine now. We're going to bring it back to the guys. Bren in the house. Bren, great to... Dude, I'm glad you tuned in, man. That's absolutely awesome. This is the band that you definitely... If there was any time you had to tune in, it was for these guys. Fantastic stuff, kind. I listen to dopamine all the time. Looking forward to listening to this one more. Bren, you're living with me. It's great. You have exclusive... Ad. Can I play it for Bren, guys? I have to see if they'll let me. Because, uh, uh, Bren, you might have actually heard it earlier today. Because Bren, Bren's in the gaff with me. And uh, you would have heard it while you were leaving the house, possibly. Um, so uh, let me know if I can play it for Bren again. Because Bren, Bren definitely deserves it. He's a long-time fan. Won't play it for anybody else, guys. Promise. Can't. He's just in my house. It's, it's, I'm, I'm letting it on play. Anyway. Yeah. So uh, Dario Radigero is going to join us. Uh, we're going to play some games. He's going to play some music live. Live music, guys. Live music. Don't miss out. Live music. Should I say it again? Um, yeah. It's free. It's free live music, right? You can tip. You can tip Dario, of course, and I do advise tipping. Absolutely, guys. But uh, we're going to play some... Uh, he's going to play some tunes. I'm going to whip him up here on the L... Um, that's him playing, by the way. Uh, we're going to whip him up here on the Zoom. And uh, we're going to slap a game on. I don't know what we're going to play. So just let us know if you have any suggestions. Uh, but I'm buzzing now. I'm getting some energy. Uh, getting my second win now for the day. And uh, after that kind interview, I'm just so buzzed. Just the guys are absolutely deadly. So um, let me slap something up. Let us know how he's been enjoying the show, guys. And do hang around. Don't uh, don't go anywhere. We got loads of other stuff still to go. And um, let me let me whip up an invitation for Dario. Let me slap on some music. And uh, we're transitioning into the Kozak Demars gaming and chats show. So we're transitioning from Demars live. Uh, technically, technically speaking, but we're still gonna stay here, okay? We're gonna stay here with you, and um, we're gonna just do some playlist and while we set up the game, while we set up uh, Dario.
All right, guys, stay tuned. We're going to start very shortly with our gaming section uh, with live music uh, featured by Dario Rodiguero. So don't go anywhere, guys. We're here for another while with you for here for this Saturday evening. So uh, we're going to be keeping your company and uh, do comment in. Keep communicating, guys. This is an interactive show and it still will stay this way um, as we continue into the night, play a bit of gamage and uh, yeah, listen to some live music, um, of course. So uh, yeah, give me a few couple of minutes. I'm just going to run to the jacks, grab myself another drink and uh, set up the next game. You, let's do it. I'm going to leave you with some music, so don't go anywhere. Play you some tunes. It's also, uh, you can also request uh, tunes off me as well if you want. Let's uh, slap up a tune by... Some of the greats, the greats. Let's do some greats.
silence of the night You can hear the sirens call In the shadow of the morn There's a fog on blowing Don't go falling down now Don't go falling down now I forgot I was muted. Right, we're doing Valheim. Bren did some great work on our camp encampment. Jeez, that's gonna keep going, isn't it? That's just gonna keep going, guys. All right, let's do this. Uh, Odin's. Dario, how, how are you doing, Dario? Oh, there we go. We got you. How's it going? Welcome. How are you keeping? Great, great. I'm streaming. I'm streaming myself Fantastic. as well. At the same time. That's great. You can see the double. <laughs> are you? How do you look at? Am double I getting screen. everything into the screen that's that you need? I don't want to miss out anything on your um from your end. If you get me. No, no, I got everything. I got yeah? everything. Okay. You, no, you're not fit properly into my little box here. I need to fit you better. I need to make sure we uh, we advertise you correctly. You know. There we go. Should we put you there? Where should we put you? I don't know. I I haven't done this before, so I don't know if I should. Uh, uh, what's this? Right. Yeah, I think we're okay there. Put you in my top right corner. Oh yeah, I can see myself. I can see yourself. You can see myself. I can see everybody. 
I'm drinking, drinking a Polish uh, non-alcoholic beer called Carmi. Well, I'm drinking a non-alcoholic red wine. No way. Are you into the non-alcoholic stuff right as well, here. are you? It's a non-alcoholic red wine. It's a <laughs> an Italian wine. Why non-alcoholic? Why non <laughs> oh, okay. I'm joking. You know, because <laughs> I, I drink non-alcoholic red wine. It's true. Yeah, yeah, they really? sell it. Does it yeah, exist it actually exists. for real? Right. <laughs> yeah. I know you thought it was a joke, but like it's serious stuff. <laughs> Look, man, I'm. I don't know if you can hear the music, but I don't Not think yet, so. Not yet. No. Yeah, yeah, but the music is on. So the only way to to listen to the music that I'm gonna play or something, I'm gonna make a beat. I'm gonna just uh, try to make a beat and loop on a on a drum kit. Maybe it has nothing to do with That's the game okay. itself. But it's uh, background music, uh, because that's what I usually do. I make beats, um, adding instruments, adding sounds over and over until I get a nice a nice sound. You know, awesome. Itself. Uh, to do that, to do that, in order to do that, I need to mute my mic for a technical reason, if that's okay. So I'm not going to talk anymore. Oh, I don't know, Dario. Like it's sounds like a lot of hassle you know muting you and you know i don't know yeah of course it's fine of course whatever works for you man whatever works best. <laughs> i'm gonna make you a little bit bigger on the screen as well and um yeah whatever suits you it's 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 great that we can still get this far with the technology right i mean this is still pretty amazing you can stream i can stream and we can also do our thing like absolutely absolutely man. Oh, so yeah. i just disconnected yeah. there for some reason um sorry just the game it's not important uh, so we're okay. We're okay. Most importantly. Yeah, I wish I could do both, but I have to do. I have to choose for technical reason. But that's okay. That's okay. Let's go. Let's okay. go for it. Gosh, I'm trying to fit you in here. Yeah, you work away. Do your thing. And uh, great to have you, man. Ah, well, great to be here. That's. Uh, I'm glad. It's been a long time since we've done this. A lot of fun before. Rebecca Cappuccini, do we have you? What's going on? Is my mic not working for in in? My mic doesn't seem to be working in uh, Discord. Let's uh, Rebecca Cappuccini. Ch -ch -ch. Check. Yeah, Check. it seems to work now, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Yeah. Let's see if Rebecca's on with us. Right. Every time I, I want a cappuccino, a cappuccino. I'm kind of here Brett Butch Deadlift, I'm having a lovely rum and coke with ice. Ooh. Uh, Ash, if you want to hop on uh, on Valheim with us, you're welcome to, dude. Oh, jeez, I was about to type in the password. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, we're called Odin's Rumpus Room, and if you want to join, I'll give you the password. Bren, I tried to launch in there now. It did turn off, so let's see if it's... um. If it stays. And we got Dario Roddy Gero um, as well. Dario, what's the best place I can post? For, oh, did you turn off your mic already? That's okay. Um, where people can find you. I mean, sh sh throw in your Twitch into the chat, maybe. Actually, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll mm. do it. It's okay. I know how to do it. I think I have to hashtag. You know the way it's like, I follow or exclamation mark. I think I got it. Right. Lovely. So I think if I don't talk, yeah, I need to mute myself for Dario as well because it affects his sound. Let me just check. Does it affect if I'm talking? It doesn't affect it. it doesn't. Actually, it doesn't. Great. Damn, man, my games. My games is doing weird things, boys. Says 
someone's in there. Re Rebecca, did you get in there, did you? Yeah, and I've never actually... S it, it never just disconnects like that if I get the password wrong anyway. It actually just says password wrong. Um, and brings you back. But this actually loads and then disconnects. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. No, it should be right. Get Dario's uh is it D seven up, isn't it? Yeah. Rebecca? Oh, you're very quiet. There you are. Hello? I can't hear you, Rebecca. I know what it was. Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh. I might be able to get an extra Yeah. I'm trying to find his uh, Twitch. There he is. Oh, there I am. Yeah. D7. Alright, guys, we gotta follow this guy. What a gap. What's 
What's up everybody? Welcome to the Twitch stream Kozak the Mars featuring live soundtrack by D7up. Check them out. It's all live guys, it's all live. What's up Sleepy Dupree? What's up Sleepy Peeps? How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. How's your weekend going? Come for the Valheim, stay for the tunes. <laughs> great stuff, great stuff, good to hear, good to hear. Alright, what are we gonna do in Valheim, guys? What's the adventure? Where's, where are we gonna go? Let's go on an adventure. Let's bring him up food. Oh, awesome. Life an adventure, guys. Let's do it. Bring in fire arrows. Let's bring as many arrows as we can. Flinthead arrows. I hope we're not just like reaping Bren now with all the hard work he's been doing. Look at this. Loads of bones. I can't stop grooving. Guys, what do you think of the music? This guy is live on his own channel. D7 up there. I got I gotta post it in there, guys. Post that up there. Follow this guy. I don't know if that's doing it. Am I doing something wrong there? Um Check this guy out, he's absolutely awesome. Oops, that's not working. Anyway, you know what you need to do. Just do your thing. All the stuff. I've got my food. Fucking tune and treat quarters. Jeez, Brent organized everything. Look at this. We've got our forge here. Thank you. 
actually run this in less than I forgot running in 60 frames. So I'm gonna just run this in the lower graphics. Back in a second, don't go anywhere. Actually, good stuff, yeah. See us over at Twitch. That's where all the good stuff is. Welcome, welcome, guys. You are listening to D7Up. Do give them a follow there. And you are watching the live gaming soundtrack with Valheim. Rebecca, let's go to another island. Actually, we need to get cores. Let's, uh, before we do that, let's, let's go this way. We need to, we need to grab some cores. this big it's huge it's absolutely massive and there's a uh, there's mythical beings to fight which sort of um, bring you to the next phase once you defeat them so um, there's a lot in this game it's also uh, interactive so we're playing with one of my friends here Vi Queen she's involved here it's a private server but anyone is welcome to pop in and, uh, yeah, it's a pretty fun game. Uh, especially when there's some action happening. But it's fun to build and stuff like that. This was built by Bren. With the assistance of Bren. He's very good, very creative guy. Yeah. It's an indie game. It's still quite new. Uh, but I'm really enjoying it. Playing with friends. It was really fun. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the stream. Thanks for popping in. Uh, do, do slap a follow if you're so inclined. And, uh, yeah, we, we try to support music along with having some fun with people. Well, that was amazing. Jesus. Big ups to D7up, guys. Bren, could you share him in the um, share him in the chat by any chance? 
Um, I have made you a. That was sorry. I got it. I got to interrupt everything. <laughs> that was amazing, Dario. Fair play to you, man. Yeah, I want. I wanted a better ending, like. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I pressed the, the the space bar for mistake. But yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's br man. I couldn't stop. I don't know if you saw, but I just couldn't stop moving to that. I oh yeah, grooving, I saw man. that. Yeah. So you, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't hear you talking, of course, because you had to mute yourself. Yeah, right? because it was interrupting your your sound. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No problem. No problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll go on. I well, do please, one. and I'm I'm linking people to. Um, to your uh, Twitch page, so. Oh, it's D Seven Up. Yeah, when I dress like this, it's because Brilliant. I'm D Seven Up. Yeah, you look like a, a, a college <laughs> football player. It is. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, I'm loving the tunes, and the guys were getting a few people watching in and tuning in. We had eight people at some stage, which was awesome, and uh, people are absolutely digging it, man. So, um, yeah, I'm telling people constantly to follow you on Twitch. I know you have the same. Uh, well, you have a you have this, you're running your own stream right now, but besides this, you're also doing your own stream. Tell us a little bit about what it what it involves. In a, it, well, I want to thank Sleepy Pete for us uh, for uh, the following. First of all, I awesome, got a, a new yes, follower, Sleepy so Pete. I'm gonna thank him Deadly. right now. Cheers! I always look at the wrong camera. There's so many cameras over there. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Well, fair play to you, cool, Sleepy cool. Pete. Yeah, this is this is actually. I call this uh, this live show a uh, live beat jam because what I'm actually doing is recording everything I'm playing uh, over a drum a drum kit. For example, the drum kit you were hearing before. So I, I put some bass, I put some synthesizer, I put some uh, pads. Anything can get, can might fit good, you know. Like and it, it is actually a jam because I'm improvising. But what I'm doing is recording everything on my software. So whatever you hear. It's actually available. But if somebody finds it interesting, or even just a little part of yeah. it, you know, Every, anybody can text me or uh, whatever because it's a beat at the end of the day, and they can have it. Maybe they're a musician; they need a beat or they need something similar, or something like just a maybe a, a little track. Maybe it can be the the drum part together with the bass, and that's it. It might be that, you know, and. Um, I thought, why not doing it live? Just, uh, just uh, it's interesting, I think. And now we are doing a double live, which is more interesting. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. The <laughs> tunes are great. Like and I, I, there's nothing beats live music. And the fact that people can actually, the fact that you're recording it and people can just go, oh, wait a sec, that was really awesome. I want that 15 seconds. They can actually contact you and uh, they can request that little segment of the song, basically. Absolutely. It's genius. Uh, let's keep doing I like doing this man I, I think we should do this more often like this is our first one by the way this is our first kind of official one doing it under this new branding as well because it's not you're you're the first time kind of doing it on Twitch right because before we did it kind of on YouTube you weren't streaming but now you're doing oh, yeah. it on Twitch so you have your own Twitch channels this is this is big stuff like this is great absolutely yeah awesome man love that I love that um uh, am I frozen in your stream? Yeah, you're right? fro you're frozen on the uh, on the Zoom. Okay, for some reason I don't know. Well, I'm okay. F uh, Physically, you're all right. So you're not really fine. frozen in real life. I'm not really frozen. That's, That's most the, important, the man. most important thing. All right, cool. So me and uh, Rebecca are going for an adventure. We have a raft, and we're going to uh, go on an adventure. You're yeah, we're playing together, together right? and we're gonna. Uh, we're gonna explore some new lands, and we're gonna go. How's it's great, so like it's uh, it's a little bit choppy, but uh, we're getting there. Um, okay. Brendan says so cool that he froze. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> uh, it was a little bit a bit warm in this room, so it's good to be yeah, frozen yeah, for a while. Yeah, the balance is nice. <laughs> Excellent. Let me just. Um, and Rebecca, you're here with us still? I am still here. I was just keeping quiet during the interview. Fair play to you. Yeah, Rebecca's here with us. It's a shame because both of you can't hear each other. You are both on different systems. Oh, yeah, that's So she's true, on actually. Discord, yeah. actually. Dario, funny enough. So you could actually hop on Discord and speak verbally to me on Discord. 
All I'll right. send you the link All anyway right. if you want it. You don't have to do it now, but it's just I got it. just as a no, okay, uh, if you wanted it. I should have done this sooner. Look at this, but um, <laughs> it's okay. We're it's learning. not okay. Okay, it's not fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> Christ. So let's speak about other drum drum kits and see what what's yes. going well, on. Well, look, I'm not going to give you any hints. Uh, because I'm gonna let you just find your flow. Oh yeah, I just go roll random. random, randomly. Yeah, we can't hear each other any anyway, so right, it's fine. Right. This okay, is, this is like I don't. I've never met this person before in my life. This is like one of those moments, you know. Uh, we know we never met. Um, <laughs> okay, so will I mute my microphone? Let me know when it's best for me to mute. And then, by the way, the Discord link is there. So if you want to try that, um, by all means. But you know, it's there as an option for you. We're in the great, Valheim great, server. Great We're in the in my server, but in the Valheim chat. Okay, I'm gonna mute myself now. So I'm muted so Dario yeah, can have a know. well, an awesome playing experience because uh, he's obviously uh, playing on the keys there. He is streaming live on his Twitch, guys. Right there it is. I throw it up there. It's a D uh, underscore seven up, and uh, he's playing music live for this stream as well. What a legend! And um, I need some food. So here we are, Rebecca. Let's hop on the raft and let's go traveling. This is so exciting. Yeah, let's just hope I remember what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, well, you know. How you do just I have get to jump on, on it, really. I think that. There we go. Just jump on it there now. There you go. Now you can ah. hold on to the raft. Hold on to the middle by pressing E. There you go, so you don't fall off there yourself, you know? That would be ideal. So now Bren yeah. can see how painful it is to actually use a raft, because he, he heard me um, sort of degrading it or, or sort of mentioning the struggles of doing that. So um, maybe Dario will deliver us some nice cracking tunes to keep us going through this um, uncertain voyage, I would call it. But the winds are in our favor to possibly move towards the Elder. Shall we face the Elder without Bren? I don't know. Bren, what do you think? Should we? You're technically watching, but I don't think it's fair to really face a, a sort of section. Maybe we could park up close to the Elder and sort of uh, put, a, put the... Uh, fucking doorway down or whatever you call it the thank you Portal. Rebecca fair play to you with the bleeding words and junk well, I'm good at the words and junk I'm also good at multitasking because I'm currently watching the scratch while I'm playing a game with how you how dare you oh <laughs> shit don't hit that oh it's hitting it it's hitting it. And we're sailing to a better future. Yes, we're sailing through the seas. Yes, we're sailing to a better place. Do you like better places? And Dario's frozen on my screen. Oh, here we go. Some tracks coming your way, guys. We're hearing some tracks. Who's that? Is that Fran? Let's see. Am I, is my stream running okay? Let me close a lot of stuff. There's too many things open. Bren, you're moderator, by the way, now. I'm... I'm Welcome trusting. To my job, right? <laughs> well, it's not that I don't think you've done anything, have you, Rebecca, for moderation yet? No, I made. I haven't made you a Twitch moderator yet. Actually, I've only made you a YouTube moderator. Let's sort that out. Yeah, no, oh Jesus! Jumpy, did I do that? Oh, I did that. In the air, I, I, I had to let out a bit of frustration. 
Uh, it's a long journey, but the wind is with us, so we should be going fast. It's just our sails a little bit holy. We'll put a portal down, Bren. Yeah, no worries, man. We're not gonna... We're not gonna leave you hanging. When'd you get a beard? Oh, like in real life, or...? No, like, not in the game. I don't think you that. What? Maybe it's just blue. I think it is just blue. <laughs> That was cool. What's up, Peanutty? What's the crack, man? Welcome. How are you keeping? Came at a good time, buddy. Thank <laughs> you. 
Nice one, dude. Nice one, man. Thanks for popping by. Yeah, groove. Get up and groove, man. Don't hold back. Get that blood flowing. Get that energy going. Get pumped before your stream, brother. Use it. Take advantage of this moment. Brad, are we there yet? Dude. Fuck no, we're not. We're miles away. We're about to get here. Look at this. At least we got good music, huh? But there's a fucking island in our way. We're gonna have to take a sharp out of the way. Do you want to navigate, Rebecca? Uh, it's kind of tricky. <laughs> it takes a little bit. Yeah, buddy. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. See you later, brother. Thanks for popping in, man. Have a great stream, dude. P Naughty, guys. Check him out. Follow P Naughty right now. He's a good dude. Great Warzone player. Entering the fog. Thank <laughs> you. 